Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Radio Networks on Saturday, October 13th, 2012. This is episode 917. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Go to ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone at the top, and enter Tech Guy. And by Ring Central. I love my cloud-based phone system from Ring Central. Zero startup costs, and Ring Central is twenty dollars per month per user. Try it now with a thirty-day risk-free trial. And when you buy one desk phone, you'll get a second phone free, up to twenty phones. Call eight hundred five four three ninety nine eighty, or visit RingCentral.com and use the promo code TWIT. And buy. Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your iPhone, iPad, MacBook, or Android smartphone. Find out what your gadget is worth and get cash to upgrade to the latest phone at gazelle.com. Hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. And it's time to talk computers, the internet, cell phones, camcorders, MP3 players, Home theater, digital photography, anything that's He's coming in mind, now. Anything that has a chip in it. 8888. 88, ask Leo. Is my phone number if you want a question. Yeah. Or a comment. Yeah. Or a suggestion. 888-827. I'll take it here. Okay, you there, Leo? Mm-hmm. Three, six. That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. outside the U.S. You Skype. Through. All right, I'm going to turn you on. Similar product, and you should be able to call and get into the show. 8888. Ask Leo. Well, I'll tell you, I have a uh, <laughs> a new love in my life. I want the whole world to know it's not about the iPhone 5 anymore. It's about the, uh, <laughs> the five and a half. The five and a half inches of the uh, Galaxy Note 2. Wow. This thing is huge. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's very, you know, I understand... Uh, people's kind of frustration with this process. Remember when, um, maybe you don't, but I do, when the question of the day was always, well, should I buy a computer now? Because there's going to be a, a better one. And we, ba- and we basically, the uh, conclusion always was, well, look, yes, the day you get it home, it starts losing value, but uh, what are you going to do, wait? Well, computers don't change that much anymore, do they? It really isn't. That question doesn't come up that much anymore with computers, but it does with cell phones. Holy moly. How how long? <laughs> I knew this would happen, and, and you probably, uh, if, if you know me, knew it would happen too. How long did I, uh, three weeks for the iPhone? And then now I've, I've moved on. I'm fickle. Uh, and I have to say, it was getting a little frustrating with the iPhone 5. Even though it's a little bit bigger screen, and I mean a little bit bigger, it's the same width. It's, you know, it's one icon row higher. That means that the keyboard is exactly the same as the uh, old iPhone. And it's hard to use for somebody like me with sausage-sized fingers. And I don't mean, I don't mean cocktail weenies. I mean Jimmy Dean pure pork sausage. I mean these, you know, and I think most guys or many guys have the same issue. Maybe a a few women. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the, uh, with this big one, this big, this big puppy, man, I can, I can just type away. And you know, it's funny, the, the thing people look at and they go, well, you can't put that in your pocket. Sure you can. It fits right in your breast pocket if you're a man. Uh, I'm sure for women it would, it would fit in just fine. So, um, anyway, this is, uh, this is the Galaxy Note 2 is going to be out in the U.S., uh, I think in the next couple of weeks. And, I, you know, I was going to wait. But, but I can't wait. You know me. And you can order. It's out in the, uh, in the UK and, uh, and uh, in Europe, I think, now. And you can order an unlocked version 
That's what I did with the uh, Galaxy S3. You can order an unlocked version. And, it, you know, it's about, it's, I think I paid 700 bucks from uh, a company called Expansus. That's about what an unlocked version would cost, you know, an un, unsubsidized version would cost here, too. So I don't, it's not a big deal for me because this is my job. And, uh, boy, I like my job. This is why I chose my job, so I'd always have the latest and greatest. So now, you know, and I suspected that this would be a great phone. I like the original Galaxy Note. Uh, I love the Galaxy S3. You know, I, it's not that I'm an Android fanboy. I, I think the iPhone is a great phone. In fact, I, I waited, I'll, I'll say it again. I've said it before. I waited now in line six hours to get the first iPhone and was happy to do it and glad I did it. And it really did reinvent. It changed, it reinvigorated the, the, the cell phone market. It was the first really useful smartphone. And I also acknowledge, and the jury found, that Samsung and others copied the iPhone when it first came out because they had no better idea. But as time's gone by, many companies have improved on the iPhone. And Apple has moved, not, not glacially, but uh, at a stately pace to upgrade the iPhone once a year. Kind of incremental improvements. That's as it should be. That's, that's kind of how the company works. And I, I wouldn't expect revolutions every year. But Android, every few months, there's a new phone. Galaxy uh, S2, S3, Note, and Note 2 all followed within uh, a year and a half. So while Apple is slightly increasing the size of the screen, this thing is five and a half inches. It's huge. It's huge. So, um, it, you know, for somebody like me who has big fingers, who wants a big phone, wants a big screen, this is almost, I've, I've called it, and I think Samsung has adopted this term, a phablet, a phone and a tablet. And nowadays, since the smartphone, I think for many of us, is as much a computer, maybe more a computer than a phone, why not have a little bit bigger screen? Some people say, well, you look silly talking into it. Well, first of all, I don't, I rarely talk into it. And when I do, I often use a, a headpiece, but I don't, I don't think I look too, I look like probably I have a slightly small head and a normal sized phone. That's all. My, that man's hands are large, but his head is so small. I, I don't know. I, uh, I like it. I like it. So it's, uh, now I'm not saying it's for everybody. The iPhone 5 is a beautiful work of art. Although I have to point out that in, in less than three weeks, how long is it? Is it three weeks? I guess it's three weeks. I've chipped the heck out of that sucker. I'm very, I'm very, uh, you know, people said initially, oh, this thing is, uh, this metal is scratches easily. It's soft. And, and I tell you where it, the, the back is not particularly soft, but the edge, the, the beveled edge around the side of it is, is fairly soft. I mean, it's a, it's aluminum and it gouges easily. And I now have, it looks like somebody has been nibbling on my phone and I haven't, uh, I haven't dropped it. Well, maybe I dropped it once. Maybe, I mean, I don't remember dropping it at all. I don't have a case for it because the case because Apple doesn't tell anybody, right? We're not going to tell you what the phone's like till it comes out. You can make a case then. Well, I'm sh you know, and I've ordered cases, but in the in the three weeks, bef you know, the cases still aren't out, and in the three weeks, I've dinged that thing up like crazy. So if you do choose an iPhone five, and it is a beautiful phone, and you know, maybe you like the iOS, maybe you like the apps you've got. Although I, there's app parity for the most part between the iPhone and the Android phone. Now, next month, we're going to see Windows 8 phones, and who knows? I might be saying in a month from now, oh, forget that Note 2. It's so, it's so October. Let, the new hot phone is the HTC 8X. That's the... That, I mean, who knows? And you don't have to follow me. Goodness knows, no one could... I mean, that'd be crazy. That'd be, that'd be crazy talk. I, I'm a reviewer. I have to try them all. But I have to say, you know what the good... And I've said this before. The good news is... You have a choice. You have a great choice now. These things have have really improved. And there's a, you know, even with Samsung, they, they, they've rumored they're going to put out a 4-inch Galaxy S3. So there'll be four, 4.3, 5, and 5.5-inch screens in the Galaxy family. You pick the size you want. Oh, and let's not forget the tablets, right? There's a 7 and a 10-inch tablet. So they range from 4 to 10 inches in pretty even steps. That's pretty impressive. You do have a choice. You have a choice uh, of carrier now, too, because Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile all have excellent phones. I think this uh, Galaxy Note, the rumor is, we don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint will all have it. They all have the iPhone. 
we have a choice. We have a choice. <laughs> if you, I'm looking at the chat room. Amiga Dave says, Leo's sweating because he carried this phone in. <laughs> it's okay, it's a little big. But it, you know, it's funny. It's actually uh, not very thick. It's, it's very thin. And it's, uh, it's actually slightly narrower and uh, uh, thinner than the, uh, its predecessor. It's just a little bit taller to get that 5-inch screen in there. It isn't, it isn't that, you know, it's, but I don't know what the, I'll look, I'll look up the weight. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. 888-827-5536. We don't have to just talk about phones. Computers, the internet, cell phones, camcorders, MP3 players, home theater, and all that jazz. Coming up, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> it takes me a little longer to get here than it used to. I didn't even bring Ozzy because I thought he's going to slow me down. Anyway, thank you. Nicely handled. I appreciate that, Luis. I mean, uh, yes, Hot Pepper. Hey, you're busy. We're all busy. And there are probably lots How's of that things you'd rather now? do right now than back up your computer files. We can move it. <laughs> but you got to do it. Over. So get Carbonite Online Backup. Carbonite backs up your computer files for you automatically and continually. Yes, yeah, Sprint Whenever has the, Doesn't Sprint have the, the S3? Internet. I thought With Carbonite, you'll never have to remember to Oh, back you know up. what? I'm never, sorry. Your ever. coffee mug Plus you can access your broke. Your You're the Washington State. Or your smartphone or it was broken in the app. box. So it's cloud storage and So back. sorry. Carbonite. I'll I mean. order one. Send me put, give me the link and I will order one and the have them ship back. it to me. Unlimited storage for your PC or Mac just $59 a year. And if you run a small business, Carbonite has plans that'll back up all of your computers, servers. Oh, poor Erica Hill. Office. She, I, I think CBS just really mis, mis, uh, Start your free trial mistreated her. You don't need a credit card, just my name, Lee. Uh, you don't need two hands. The note and note two are not identical. I will bring you, uh, I'll bring my note back in, and I will show you the note. Um, to compare it, there, this is, uh, I mean, it's similar. I'll tell you what, super fast, quad core, uh, noticeably faster. Two gigs of RAM on this sucker, which is, which I think may make, may make more of a difference than the, uh, the speed of the uh, processor. You know, I didn't root it yet. I don't feel the need to root it. I did put a, uh, you notice I'm not using TouchWiz. I did put uh, Nova Launcher on here, which I, I like. This comes, which I really am happy about with a jelly bean so i get all of those nice jelly bean uh, features including the uh, the google now feature which i really like that's google now look at that's kind of fuzzing on the screen huh this refresh rate is slightly odd for this giving you more options than ever and the best part epson connect works with all new epson printers print from anywhere with any of epson's new printers don't get stuck in yeah, it's a little bit pulsing print with epson connect um you know, I can live with that titanium backup. It's got, you know, we got Google backup. I did, you know, seven hundred bucks, seven hundred bucks for this, sixteen gigs, but it takes up to a sixty-four gig SD card, so there's plenty of space. Um, what could I show you to make to show you the, uh, the speed? Go launcher is okay, but I think really my favorite is no, is Nova. Oh man, I like Nova. You know, you have these these little things down here. Um. <laughs> hey, I can make a hundred bucks right now. <laughs> Waze looks great on this screen. You bet. Um. This is the base. The beautiful widgets is the basic one. You know, the beautiful weather home screen. I think it's called. Oh, you see, I haven't used Waze yet. In fact, I have to log in. Let me log in here real quick. Hey. Uh, you know, I, I didn't shave. I was It was so late because I had a 9 o'clock class. And so I just, I didn't brush my hair. I went, whoa, I haven't brushed my teeth. My hair is shaved. It was, whoa. Oh, here's the key. Here's the, uh, I should show you this. The nice big keyboard. Oh, it's so big. And I love this on the original note that there's room for a number row. Oh, and you could type on this beautifully, beautifully. Ha, 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 ha. 302. Use the 302 always, um, Dr. Mom. That's my um, Google Voice number, and that rings all the phones. This phone is uh, on the same number as the Galaxy S3 was. I've re retired that, believe it or not. I am already a wazer.
A Galaxy, a Galaxy Note 2. I'm pumping iron, just walking down the street. I, <laughs> you know, it's it's actually not very heavy. In fact, that's one of the beauties of this thing. These phones are so thin now and light that uh, even a five inch screen. I'm sorry, I'll stop talking about it. <laughs> 8888 Ask Leo. That's the phone number if you got a question, a comment. A suggestion, we have a great website, too, techguylabs.com. Techguylabs.com. You know, it's true. Geeks should have big, heavy phones because then we'd get a little, you know, exercise. In bet- you know, in, in between, in between uh, Call of Duty and uh, Big Bang Theory, we could, we could get a little exercise in there. If you go to techguylabs.com, you'll find the chat room. That's where our geeks get their exercise, typing. Typing, typing, typing. Scribble, scribble, scribble. TechGuyLabs.com. Click the chat link. You can join 1,000 people, usually around 1,000 people during every show. Um, and it, what's really nice about the chat room for me, from my point of view, is it's, it's kind of my brain. I, you know, I've been doing uh, these kinds of shows, Tech Talk Radio. I, I started in talk radio in, in 84, uh, but I started Tech Talk Radio in around 91. And... Uh, when I was young, <laughs> 20 years ago, I, I, and, and by the way, the computer industry was not nearly as complicated. I, I could remember everything. I knew everything. And, you know, I didn't have the Google then anyway, so I had to. But I did do something even then, right from the beginning, I started a chat room. Because I knew that some, one day, 20 years down the road, I'd be old and my brain would be atrophied and I wouldn't remember. And there'd be a lot more to remember and I wouldn't remember everything. So the chat room, see, I've externalized my brain over the last 20 years. Weekend by weekend, I've poured my knowledge into this chat room. People say, you know, the singularity is coming. Someday computers will be as smart as humans and you could pour your brain into a machine and you'll live forever. Forget that. I got something better. It's made of people. It's the chat room. They don't know it. Shh, don't tell them. But they're but every weekend, actually, most of them are there twenty four seven. To be to be brutally frank, <laughs> they get they 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 absorb all this information, not just from me, but from my podcast network all week long. All the brilliant people we have there, like Tom Merritt and I as Actar and Sarah Lane, and pouring their knowledge. Scott Wilkinson. Steve Gibson, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, Jeff Jarvis, Gina Trapani, all the hosts on the network, they pour their their hard-earned knowledge into the chat room. The chat room, like a sponge, absorbs it. And then on the weekend, I just sit here, I do the radio show, I, I, and, I, and, and I go, I, I don't know, chat room. And they tell me. They, they regurgitate all that information. They're so smart. So you want <laughs> Now that I've described it so beautifully, <laughs> would you like to be a part of it? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I made that very appealing, didn't I? 8888 Ask Leo. The chat room is irc.twit.tv. It's web based, so you can just go in there and, and uh, participate. And, uh, and, the, and the website is techguylabs.com. That's where we put all the uh, repository of knowledge. Big Ginge, and who lives in Great Britain. See, we have listeners all over the world. Says he, he, he is Leocatus of Borg. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been stalling, and you probably could tell, couldn't you, uh, Kyle Benham, musical director, board opera extraordinaire. I'm not getting into for some reason. I'm not getting into the call screening stuff. It's rejecting me. So why don't you just tell me who the first call of the day is, and I'll 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 get take it from there. Cool. We're going to Alex in Dallas. Alex in Dallas. You're first. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, hey, Alex. Welcome. Hey, Leo. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Uh, I could be better. You probably. I'm guessing. Wait a minute. Don't tell me. I'm gonna mm, read your mind. You have a you have a technology problem. I do. Wow. I do. Wow. You're brilliant. Amazing. Um, and and yeah. Uh, so I have my master's in enterprise systems, and I'm I'm having to call. Wait a minute. The, uh, you have a master's degree, and you're calling me. I know. I know. <laughs> Holy cow. Know. I'm honored. I know. <laughs> this, is, this is embarrassing. Anyways. <laughs> hey, but don't, so, but you're, you're not just calling that. me. You're not just calling me. You're calling the Borg of the chat room, you see. That's, that's true. That's true. 
And um, in any case, I have a, it's a 2010 MacBook Pro, and um, and I'm getting kernel panics. Oh, and that's not update, good. Yeah, it's not good. Um, and uh, I'm thinking it um, might be the logic board or something like that. Yeah, I mean, probably is. Long. I'll tell you, you know, so when you get a blue screen of death in Windows or a kernel panic in uh, OS X, those are, of yeah. course, the hardest crashes. They're crashes that really are, you know, no program can cause that kind of crash because it, uh, these computers now are operating with protect, you know this, I, I don't have to tell you, with protected memory. Ring zero, uh, which is the most protected area, the kernel, cannot be uh, addressed by a program, even a program gone rogue. So it, there's only two possibilities when you get a kernel panic. It either means a dri see, drivers do have to access that area. So uh, it could be a driver going wrong, so it could be software, but it's much, much more likely um, something in hardware. So it's either very low level. Have you, have you believe it or not, you still in the 2010 Max and later can still clear the parameter RAM. Remember that? Uh, no, I, I do not. PRAM. Okay. Uh, so this is where, this is where uh, somebody of my age <laughs> might be of value to you. It's one of the first things you should try uh, on a Macintosh, uh, which is... Um, Restart the Mac. Okay, so actually what you want to do is, is, sh is shut it down and remove power and really get it down to zero, right? right. Now, here we go. This is, this is the fun part. When you turn it, now turn it back on, holding three, car three keys, Option, P, and R All right. for parameter RAM. Believe it or not, they still, even on modern-day Macs, use parameter RAM. You keep holding command, I'm sorry, did I say option? Command option P and R, four keys. This is the equivalent of the three key salute in Windows. Command option P and R, and you'll, you'll, you'll see it, it'll go boom, and it'll start over. Do that a couple right. of times. Got it. Now what that does is, and if this could cause a logic panic, uh, or a kernel panic. The parameter RAM is like the uh, BIOS on Windows. It's, uh, it's a yeah. non-volatile memory, and if it got corrupted, it could cause that. So that's one thing yeah. to do. Now, um, let's see. I guess the other option is to pay out the Wazoo to Apple or something like that. Yeah, I mean, Apple makes it so there's no user serviceable parts inside, right? Yeah. Can you remove yeah. the battery on that 2011 MacBook? No, you look, can't. I think you can't. It's a, 20, I think, it's a 2010 MacBook. 20, oh, 2010 you might be able to. Look on the bottom and see if there's a quarter-sized uh, uh, you know, button that you can turn and remove it. If you can... That's kind of what you want to do because that will really shut it down good. Okay. If you can't, okay. most and none of the new uh, Macs can you. What you're going to be resetting is the parameter RAM or the SMC, uh, okay. both of which could cause uh, could cause problems. The system management controller. That's an Intel thing. Okay. But okay. what we're doing is hard, high, you know, low level uh, fixing. But you know, if none of this helps, the other thing to do is to boot from your. Uh, do you have, in that age you would, you have a, 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 a disk. Right. So boot from your system disk, okay? And your system disk will now run and you'll be in the operating system. See if you still have kernel panics. If you do, yeah, it's your logic board and now you do have to bring it in. Okay. Thanks for the call. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I don't know why, but I, I am connected on the VPN. I am, but the, the call screening will not connect. Are you guys having trouble with your call screening software? Uh, no, we're okay, but we, do you want us to just... Re I'll have Gina reset. Have her reset it, because um, it's attempting, it's attempting, it's attempting, and then it goes boom, I can't. Did I not just say how much I love the Note 2? I'm sorry, did you not hear that? What do you want review-wise? It is awesome! Yeah, thank you. Can, we could put that in the show notes. That's the uh, rebooting system RAM. Bring EPIC back. Yeah, hook up Scott, would you? Go for Scott. And I have... Skype. So let me, you want more of a review? Let's see. Um, hey, Scott. Hey, Leo. How are you doing? I am well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Where do you want to talk about? 
Uh, well, let's see. I've got a number of questions, more than I can answer in the time allotted, <laughs> I'm right. sure. Well, let's do that. And and we can announce uh, uh, officially, well, I guess we did last week, but uh, you can um, say you're coming in. I will do that. Also, uh, Home Theater Geeks has uh, switched to 2 o'clock on Monday. Oh, yeah, let's mention that, yeah, because I guess Twyatt was... Twyatt was pulling a Leo and, and, ble- <laughs> and bleeding into your time. Well, and that was fine. I had no trouble with it, really. But uh, it was a little... Um, it's hard for the guests, I understand. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's, that was the main thing. So, so this that's is, totally fine. This is an AT&T phone. Um, what's, P- what's the PPI? I'm not sure what the PPI is. Oh, show us the stylus. I forgot. So when I pull the... Um, when I pull the stylus at it, automa- I've set it to automatically launch the uh, Note application. This has a Wacom um, digitizer on it, which is fantastic. And um, it's much faster than the, the Note 1 was. So it now keeps up with my handwriting, which means um, it really uh, uh, it really is useful. You know, for instance... <laughs> People, people give you phone numbers, right? And you can pull out the keyboard and type it, or you just go, you know, five 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 one two one two, and it's a lot easier. And you can read that, even though the computer can't. <laughs> the pen has been detected, so the handwriting pad is automatically shown. Okay, this is the. I don't know what this. Oh yeah, see, oh, it's doing handwriting recognition. Apparently does it quite well. So all in all, I am really, uh, this is an impressive piece of hardware. Now this, is, maybe somebody knows something about Samsung. What the hell is that? I don't know, how do I get rid of it? It seems to pop up. Oh, maybe if I put this pen back, it won't go away. That would be nice. It senses the pen. The pen has a much better uh, button for pushing and all that stuff. And also, you don't. you can hover the pen. It's got a hover pen mode now, which is great. I just love it. Oh, and it's got a it's got a, a warning. If you leave the pen behind, it'll beep at you. You say, "Oh, you left your pen behind." <laughs> this is so awesome. Oh, I'm so glad it came out. And I have it without a contract. The Sue, seven hundred bucks. Then you just put your SIM in. Batteries aren't available yet. I, I wish they would be, uh, but soon. Uh, NFC. This is a thirty one hundred milliamp hour battery. So. Um, I got 10 hours for the on the first charge. I'm sure I'll get more as it conditions a little bit. Very easy, though. But I always buy three batteries. Okay, here we go. Scott Wilkinson is here, our home theater guru from the Home Theater Geeks podcast and hometheatersecrets.com. Great to see you once again, Scott Wilkinson. Thank you so much. Glad to be here, as always. We got a little announcement. Uh, we've moved Home Theater Geeks back an hour so that you, as for scheduling purposes... Uh, and that means 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on Mondays Correct. on the Twit Network. You can watch live at twit.tv, or you can download after the fact. We make audio and video uh, on-demand versions available at twit.tv slash htg. <laughs> <laughs> Scott also answers uh, questions not only here, Scott at techguylabs.com, but also on his uh, column, uh, brand new and uh, really great at Home Theater Secrets. Dot com. It's actually home sorry, theater high fi dot com. It's home theater high fi dot com. Right. There are no secrets. <laughs> well, it is the secrets of home theater and high fi. That's right. Revealed. Yeah. Revealed. Revealed. <laughs> and there he is. And right, boy, you are on the front page. Uh, do they do that because it's yeah. Saturday? Uh, no. <laughs> Look, they're that, actually the they're picture? actually being very nice to me. They uh, love they, you. Um, even? I just disappeared. Oh no! <laughs> he slid uh, out of the way. I can't get him back. <laughs> no, they're they're very they're being very nice to me. They're they're promoting my column very well. Um, Wonderful. Uh, you know, I have some visibility in the industry, so they're taking advantage of it. And I'm saying, oh, that's great. Wonderful. Thank you. <sighs> Shocking. I would <laughs> I would never take advantage of Scott. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so, um, gosh, I have so much to talk about with you. I uh, I am setting up a second home theater in my house because now I have an upstairs and a downstairs. And, of course, one can't be more than 10 feet away from a television at any time. That's the new... Of course That's not. the law. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, so I got a, a Parian speakers. Now, I haven't had a chance to really try them out. I like to break them in a little while and stuff. And a Denon... I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And a Denon uh, amp. But I... One of the... Th- and... 
<laughs> and I and I'm going to review this too, but I haven't had a chance to do it. Uh, I'm still unpacking. But Roku's uh, stick just came out, the MHL Ooh. stick. So this yeah. the idea. Roku, for those who don't know, Roku is a way of adding internet to your television. Uh, in fact, most of the times it's better than the smart apps that come with your TV, even if your TV is already an internet a- enabled. But uh, it was always an external box with an HDMI plug and an internet plug or or Wi-Fi. But now. <laughs> Because of this new MHL port, this new HDMI port, uh, I could plug this into my Onkyo receiver, which has an MHL port, and just add Roku capability instantly. It's amazing. This is so cool. It is so cool. This is a trend that I think is very important in the in the entire industry. And in fact, I got a letter, an email from Anita Lampert asking this very question. Uh, should I buy a smart TV or not? Should I buy a separate box that can be replaced as technology improves, which is which seems more effective, cost effective certainly than than replacing the TV? And I have to agree with her entirely. And this uh, Roku stick is even better. It's not even a box. If your TV it, now do all new TVs have MHL ports or no? This not is as brand as new. I, this is pretty brand new. Yeah. It's on phones and, and portable devices more than it is currently on TVs. Although, as you say, your Onkyo has it. So it's starting to appear in the home-based home theater products. I just got a new uh, Panasonic uh, Viera Plasma as well, a GT50. A GT50, yeah. nice and plasma. I don't, I don't think it has MHL either, and it's brand new. I don't new, think so. Which is yeah. Yeah. disappointing. Yeah, but if you get if you can have a device that has an MHL port that's plugged into your home well, theater system, the yeah, yeah, then then you're you're golden. You can just uh, plug that thing in. I mean, you know, a separate box, a Roku box, or a boxy box, or something that's like fine that. Too. I mean, you got it's not too big yeah. nowadays. You, you know, you got a cabinet and you've got you know all these things hooked up into your TV. So or or your Blu-ray player. You don't really even need a separate box right. if you most virtually all Blu-ray players these days have all sorts of streaming apps in them, including Netflix and Hulu Plus and so many others. Uh, that if you're going to have a Blu-ray player anyway. And most of them have these apps built in as well. Uh, you know, you don't really need a smart TV. On the other hand, of course, most TVs these days are smart are TVs. Smart. They have these apps as well, so you have them in multiple places. Well, that's that's true. And you may say, well, why spend sixty to a hundred bucks more for a Roku? I just or an Apple TV for that matter. I just like the interface a little bit better. Um, well, that that is exactly right. Yeah. Even if you have streaming capabilities in multiple devices, the interfaces are going to be different and the specific apps are going to be different. So you might get an app on one device that you don't have on another, which is why I recommend if you're going to buy a new TV and a new Blu-ray Blu player and they both have apps on them, don't necessarily get them from the same company. Get them from a different company because then you'll have a choice. Right often about which apps to use, which user interface you prefer. The only disadvantage there is that there may not be quite as tight an integration of operation between the two. Uh, if you get a Panasonic TV and Blu-ray player, one remote will easily operate both. I, am, uh, if you, I you know, I, I, unfortunately, you know, Samsung, LG, uh, Panasonic, everybody's doing their own smart TV with their own interface. It's unique. And, of course, updating yep. the TV is not going to be trivial. Uh, I I wish, uh, you know, the thing I was hopeful for is Google TV. Because what's the one thing that I really want, I think most people want, is the ability to say, okay, I want to watch Big Bang Theory. Where is it? Where can I watch it on broadcast? Where can I watch it on, uh, you know, TBS? Where can I watch it on demand? And and have those choices. And so far, to my knowledge, the Google TV is the only device that currently offers search across. And it's Google, of course, it does across the yes. board. And that's what yes. I think we really want, you know. And because, for instance, sometimes it's free on Amazon if you have Prime, but you'd have to pay if you got it from Apple TV. I want to know: is there a free version I can watch? Mm. I've been bit. Well, that, I bought I bought a program on Apple TV that I then found out was on Netflix. And it was like, oh, no, don't, don't. Well, you do that well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it, I, I, uh, we, yes, it's right true. now it's we're in one of the, that crazy time when everybody's doing their own thing and there's no inter, intercompatibility. I know, I know. And that's what Google TV was supposed to be in the beginning, mm. and it really wasn't. No. And it still isn't, but it's getting better. Uh, my, one recent podcast a couple weeks ago, I had uh, Barb Gonzalez on, who's the streaming guru. She really knows her streaming very well. 
And we were talking a lot about Google TV. So, um, and I must admit, I have to go back and listen again to remember exactly what we were talking about because, you know, my brain's a FIFO buffer. <laughs> first in, first out. First in, first out. <laughs> and that was weeks ago. So that, that, that date is long gone. <laughs> but, um, but yes, I agree with you entirely that, that we need some sort of unifying interface or structure wherein you can find whatever you want, wherever it's being broadcast or streamed or downloaded or whatever, and you can find out which ones are free. Of course, uh, you know, the, the uh, content providers probably don't want you to find that right, out. They'd right. rather you find the one that's that costs. That's part of the problem, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. The uh, chat room's pointing out there's an app called Fanhattan and, uh, and a website, but that's not quite it. Uh, yes, they, they allow the search at Fanhattan uh, on the app. Uh, it's on the iOS only. Um, and the web is coming soon. But uh, the problem, what I want is an interface to the TV so that I click it. Exactly. <laughs> and then it launches. Exactly. And then there it is right there. Yeah. Instead of having to look for it on one device and then go figure out how to get I it on your I want a smart TV guide is basically what I want, right? You know... The Holy Grail. Yeah. <laughs> what, what else are people asking you? Well, let's see. I got somebody here asking. Uh, they have a Marantz. Uh, let's see. This is Stanford. And he is asking about the Marantz SR7005 AV receiver, which has an Ethernet port, but he wants it to be wireless. So is there any way he can make it wireless? And the answer, as I'm sure you know, is yes, absolutely. All you need is an Ethernet to Wi-Fi bridge or adapter. Uh, IO Gear makes them. Netgear makes them. You probably know a bunch of other companies oh, yeah. that make them. And they're not expensive, and that is a very oh. handy thing to have. Scott Wilkinson, go to twit.tv slash HTG for his podcast or hometheaterhifi.com. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. The, the stick is plugged into the Ankyo receiver. It actually, the MHL is on the front. And uh, then that well, that's very convenient. How good of them to do that? Yeah. Well, yes and no, because now it sticks out a little bit. But that's all right. It's in ah. the cabinet. When we built the new Tech and Guy then, Labs, we wanted um, to do as well. And then what happens is uh, that's a new HDMI choice. So I would go to HDMI 6, and there's Roku. Just like if you had a separate oh, cool. Roku box. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's basically a form of HDMI. Hold on a second, because I have some business to handle with Kyle. Kyle, I'm still not able to, uh, to connect here. I don't know. Reset. Do you think? Uh, did you, and you reset on your end? My producer loves getting his voice. Let me, me reboot. We can even get all our fax messages right on our. I, uh, the Green VPN Central. is connected. All inclusive pricing as low as twenty dollars so per month I per user. Generally, that means right that that everything's going. All I need is going because uh, you know all I have to do is be on your network and and I am on your network. So I don't know what's. Let me reboot and uh, try again one more time. Four four three fifty one ninety. Okay, thanks. All right. So you've reset. Okay. We might have to go to uh, IM if this doesn't work, but I'll reboot now. Go ahead, Scott. Why don't you, uh, while I'm rebooting, why don't you take a few more? Sure. Happy to. Um, in fact, uh, UK Man 2012 in the chat room is asking about the Wii U and the Wii TV EEE, uh, which we also talked about on uh, on uh, the podcast with Barb Gonzalez. And that would cert that's certainly... Looks like it's going to be something that might do this um, con uh, incorporation, uh, consolidation, I should say, aggregation, to use the new word. Uh, but I haven't seen one yet, so I don't exactly know. Uh, uh, Barb hasn't seen it either, so we're, we're waiting to see what that's going to look like uh, and see if it fulfills that promise. Uh, CorePro asks, uh, of the Panasonic plasmas, is the GT or ST closer to the VT? So they have these models. There's the uh, and they go in order of uh, ascending price: ST50, GT50, and VT50. So the GT is closer to the VT. Uh, both of them are THX certified, I'm pretty sure. Whereas the ST50 is not THX certified. Um, so that's one of the primary differences. They all have apps. They all are 3D. Uh, if you want to save some money, the ST50 is perfectly fine. Uh, Leo went with the GT50, which is also perfectly fine. Uh, I, I would have no trouble with, uh, with any of them, really. Uh, so let's see. David Bix is asking, have I checked out the HD Tracks high-res version of Beach Boy Sunflower or Surf's Up? No, I haven't, but that sounds like a great thing. Um, 
I, I would definitely want to look for that. HD, tra HD Tracks, by the way, is a uh, download site for music, which down, uh, gives access to 2496 audio. Normal CD is uh, sampled at 16 uh, bits with 40, at 44.1 kilohertz. Uh, and uh, HD Tracks offers audio at higher digital resolution than that, uh, which is, in fact, uh, a better sounding uh, thing. So that's, uh, that's a very good thing. Caffeine Free Dave is, ask, is saying, Wii U is dead to me until it's under 250 bucks. You know, that would be another question. I, I don't know how much it will be to start with, but of course it's going to fall in price, as everything does. We were talking earlier in the chat room about... Um, OLEDs and how their price is going to fall, and I'm sure it is. Uh, Samsung and LG both have a 55-inch coming out. Now, not till the end of the year, maybe not even next year. Who knows? I, we haven't heard anything real definitive about that. Uh, and I suspect they're going to probably be on the order of eight to $10,000 to begin with. But like everything else, the price is going to fall. By the end of 2013, it's going to be less. I can't really predict how much, but certainly less. 2014, it's or so it's going to almost become a commodity like, like anything else. Assuming they can get the manufacturing down to a, a process that they can just replicate. If they, if they continue to get high failure rates, which has been one of the problems of OLED up till now, then it may never go come down in price because they have to throw out a bunch of them because they. Leo, Carbonite, Sherlock, or Nod 32 is your library. Thank you, sir. And then did you get it up? Nope. Call off, no? Okay, Who's Mike, the first in call? Mike in Orange County. Got it. We'll pass out on the couch. All right. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's my song, right? There. You know, I was just thinking this morning. If sitting on the couch watching TV and eating potato chips were healthy, I would do that. I would do that. So I was thinking, why do I exercise? Well, because it's healthy, but not because it's fun. <laughs> but now if eating, I, I don't know why I was thinking that. I guess I didn't, I didn't want to get up and go to, go to the gym. 8888-ASK-LEO. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 888-827-5536. Mike in Orange County, you're next. Leo Laporte here. Morning, Leo. How are you doing? I am well, Mike. How are you? Not too bad. I just had a question for you about uh, the Android 4.1 update for uh, the Galaxy S3 in the U.S. Jelly Bean. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little bit confused at how uh, this S3 seems to be the, the flag, flagship device for... I, I know, I know, I know, I know. They rolled it out in Poland two weeks ago. Apparently it's coming out in areas I think people in England have gotten it. But why the U.S. hasn't, I don't know. Jelly Bean is the uh, latest version of Android, as you say, 4.1. Um, and it is significantly, I have to say, because one of the reasons I went to the Galaxy Note 2 is because it comes with Jelly Bean. I, I have a Galaxy S3. Uh, and Jelly Bean is significantly improved, even over Ice Cream Sandwich, the 4.0. They, they, it's faster. It's, it just feels better. I like some of the new features like uh, Google Now, uh, which is a great little feature that will let you know about, uh, you know, for instance, I was, uh, you know, I'm, they could tell that I was interested in... Um, the San Francisco Giants, because I did some searches and so forth. So I've, I've been getting the scores of the playoff games, which is great. Little things like that, just automatically. So I don't, you know, what what Samsung is saying is we're pushing it out. Now, remember, the carriers have something to do with this as well. Uh, and, it, and it may not be Samsung's fault. It may be, you know, so what happens is Google open sources the software, which they did a month or two ago. Then Samsung says, okay, let's look at it. How do we adapt it for our custom UI, TouchWiz? That takes a little more time. Then they test it. That takes a little Now, okay, it's good. Now we're rolling it out. Well, first, we'll roll it out in a small way to see if there's any big showstoppers, they call them. So they roll it out in Poland. And uh, I haven't heard of any showstoppers. Then they do England. So I would expect it to be in the U.S. soon. I really would. Now, I got impatient. I rooted my Galaxy S3. And I uh, put uh, um, uh, a mod on it, Cyanogen Mod 10, which is Jelly Bean. But the disadvantage of doing that is not everything works. There's driver issues. So, for instance, yeah. Wi-Fi wasn't very good. 
So well, I would wait. If you haven't rooted your phone, I would wait. Why doesn't Apple have this problem? Because, uh, well, first of all, Apple doesn't update nearly as often, do they? Uh, once a yeah. year. Uh, and I think when Apple went into the phone market, it had huge clout. And it still probably has huge clout. Carriers are willing to put up with this from Apple. But there may also be stuff we don't know about behind the scenes. Um, for instance, gen my, it's my understanding that if it's a bug fix or a security fix, the carrier does not charge the handset manufacturer for the update. But if it's an update like this to a new operating system version, they charge Samsung back for the, the download. That's why Samsung sometimes doesn't do it over the air. They do it via keys. They're special, which is really stupid. Um, so, I, you know, it's, it's, the problem is we can't see into this black box that is the carrier huh. operating system um, handset manufacturer triad. They all have competing interests. You know, Google wants it to all be for, oh, believe me, Google would like every handset that can do it to run 4.1. But they can't force that issue. So uh, what what happens is, we're, hey, at least we're getting the upgrade. I mean, there are there are plenty of phones out there that aren't even getting the upgrade. Nexus, by the way, which is Google's own version uh, of of the Android handset, uh, just got it a, a few months ago. So it's not instant, even with Google. I I share I share your frustration as a Galaxy S three owner. I finally gave up. <laughs> I finally gave up. Now. And 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 I'm kind of happy to say that I've got on the Note two I've got Jelly Bean. But you know what's going to happen? You know, there are only a handful of handsets that have Jelly Bean now, and and the Google Nexus, uh, and newer stuff. Um, so it just take it just takes a little while, and I think it's got to be more than just what Samsung wants. I think it has to be yeah. what AT and T and 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 uh, and Google want too. They're all they're all in this thing. I know you're frustrated. I understand. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing more about that Note too. It seems like it's a, oh. a great device, and uh, oh. some of the features I've been watching on YouTube are, well, are fantastic. It's basically a Galaxy S3 with a bigger screen. I mean, that's that's pretty much what it is. You know, with the pen, the pen too. Right? It's got the S Pen. And it, oh yeah, the style. I shouldn't ignore the stylus. You know, uh, the stylus turns out to be kind of kind of useful. It's got a Wacom digitizer on here, so it's um, pressure sensitive, uh, and it turns out to be when you get this big. It's kind of kind of cool. You can draw. I don't. I'm not an artist. So I, I would imagine if somebody could draw, this would be really cool. But even handwriting notes are great. Mike, I'm glad you listened. Thanks for taking for, for calling and uh, and I just you, you sh I sh I sympathize, but I don't have a fix. Thanks for letting me vent. <laughs> All right, a little venting. Debbie in San Diego. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Debbie on the line from San Diego. Hi, Debbie. Yeah. Hi, Leo. Welcome. What can I do for you? Um, I. Oh God! <laughs> I don't know, Debbie, but I I just have this vision of you with your face in your hands, shaking your head. Oh, what's the matter? What happened is that I called you on my cell phone and I deactivated Bluetooth, and then when I came back out and turned the power on, got you back on Bluetooth, and so I'm echoing. Yeah, I hear a little. Uh, 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 do you want me to put you on hold and you can figure it out and we'll get back to you? I can't do it without the car off. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Kapil and Lake You know, Forest. I did this yesterday, with, but not with Bluetooth, with the alarm system in the in the studio. <laughs> I, 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 I said, I, I uh, armed the alarm, and then I said, just I thought, oh, maybe somebody, I said, hello, and, and Ryan said, oh, I'm here. I said, oh, no, and I tried to disarm it, couldn't. So Ryan and I said, well, let's go outside and uh, and then it'll reset, and then we can disarm it. So we went outside. The alarm starts going off. It locks the door. I feel like it's Fort Knox. I'm standing outside. My my key's not working. Nothing's working. And the alarm's going off. I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> then the SWAT team showed up. I hope the SWAT team doesn't show up for you. 8888, Ask Leo. We're going to take a break for news anyway. We'll be back with more of your calls right after this. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. All right, hey Leo, I'm gonna reset Telos. I don't know if it's, that will help. It's it's I there's I I cannot connect. I am on the VPN, which means I'm on your network. 
Okay. Um, so I know that the that's labs do everything in. in the cloud store documents, hold meetings. Um, that's why I love so my cloud-based phone is is that system. From I'm just Central, not making the connection. Zero startup costs. Once I'm no into your, your network. Deal with. So I Ring think Central, it's all not something I can do anything per month about. Per user. Okay, uh, Gina Reboot, is that usually uh, solves it, but the only thing I can think of at this point is it might be something with the Telus system. So we got everybody's phone number. We're going to call them back because this is going to hang up on them. I'm going to reset. So sorry. Oh. Zero. I'm going to reset it right now. Before you do that, let me just see if I have internet. I just reset it. Okay. So. <laughs> I should. Uh, hey, I, speak up. I can't yeah, hear you. I'm getting internet Everyone knows that copying through software your IP address. Is breaking the law and Let me do an IP chicken. Advantage. No need to whisper. If you see this happening where you work, report it confidentially to the BSA. Just visit nopiracy.org. You pirates. In addition to doing what's right, turn in your software piracy turn, and turn you in your uh, cash your old your, no your old employer. There's they shouldn't have fired you anyway. That's their fault. Thanks for choosing Internet Explorer 7. Oh, I guess I'm on XP. This is the latest version I can use. Well, at least the Internet's working. Let me do um, IP Chicken. Dot com. This should show up, show as a clear channel address, not as a... Um... Oh, no, it looks like... No, well, that's not good. I guess maybe the IP... The VPN client is connected. I guess IP Chicken... It's using, it has my address. Eight is the latest for XP. Well, it doesn't matter because I, I never use browsers on this. Some hideous toolbar is on here. Oh, the Ask toolbar. God, how do I get rid of that? Options. Get the hell out of here. No, of course they don't have an uninstall feature. It should use the VPN's IP? Oh, well, maybe the VPN's not working. Let me think about this. Shouldn't it, once I'm on the VPN? I'm, I'm sorry, Leo. I had, I was talking to Tina. No, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the chat room. Don't worry about it. But we did just reset uh, the Telos, and we are getting... Are, are they labeled? Okay, so she's going to label something. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and then I may... We, if we, this doesn't work... So it... Um, tunnel details, root details. <sighs> well, let me let me launch the uh, call screener. Yes, I do. You fixed it. You fixed it. You're a wonderful person. Apparently, not all traffic is going over the VPN. Only the um, only the VPN traffic. Our show today brought to you by our friends at sharefile.com. This is how I share my files, share my um, uh, ads with Kyle and the radio stations along the way. A very, uh, we often have to send these ads. And I send them, you know, uncompressed WAV files. They're big files. I'm not going to e email them. I did when I first started emailing. And then I started using, like, different consumer file sharing things. And it... You remember, it didn't work. <laughs> the guy at KFI was deleting them. And that meant that Kyle couldn't get them. Things like that. It was just a mess. Fortunately, Citrix said, hey, we, we got this new product. Would you like to try it? I said, what is it? ShareFile, yes. And now I'm a ShareFile fanatic. Um, in fact, let me show you my ShareFile. I've showed, I think I've showed you this before. But it, what's cool about it is I, it's uh, customized for me. So it has our uh, company logo. Um, now you can have a out. I don't use Outlook, but if you used Outlook, there's a plugin that makes it look just like email attachments, but it's not. There's no there's no effective limit. I think it's four gigs or there's some huge limit to the file size. You can send massive files, no bounce backs, but even better, you have complete control of how the file is used, and I think that that is huge. So let me just I'll go to the I'll, let's just say I'm going to send this recording. These are the these are the commercials in my share file folder, right? So let's say I want to send that. Now, I could they could just give me an email form, but I like to do this. I give I have a link. By the way, the link never changes, so I don't even have to email them the link anymore. Once I did this. And these are the settings. I do this to show you. Email when the item's been downloaded, I can say you have to enter your name and email. I can expire the download never or after a day. 
In fact, usually what I have it set for is a week. I don't want them to download it after the week has gone by, right? Because that's a, how many downloads can they do? And then we send files. Now, it's going to give me a link. Now, this link, they don't have to be a share file user, user or anything. I'll go to it in my browser, and I'll show you what happens when they um, click the link in their email or they paste it. They actually just get a very simple branded download link. This has worked so well, even with unsophisticated users, you know, in, in traffic departments all over the country. Sharefile.com, whatever your industry, if you go to sharefile.com, you'll see that they customize it for a variety of industries. It's HIPAA compliant, for instance, if you're in health care. Um, it is, uh, it, it's, it's all the government standards are adhered to. It uses encryption, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When you start your free trial, if you would do me a favor, use Tech Guy as the offer code. I would be very, very grateful. Sharefile.com. You get 30 days free. But just uh, all I ask is you enter the offer code. It'll ask, it asks you later on. The offer code tech guy. Actually, maybe let me look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to click that link at the top. I know you're listening to a podcast, but where it says radio listeners, would you click that? That way it's, it speeds you right to this promo code tech guy. And then choose the industry. You don't have to. But you could choose the uh, industry. Then it'll be customized for the needs of that particular industry. And continue. Sharefile.com. The offer code is TechGuy. 30 days free. Really the best way to do this. And I know because that's how I do it. Scott's been sitting there. You're so patient, Scott. You want? You, got, <laughs> you, could, you could do a minute or two if you wanted. Uh, okay. I do have a couple questions for you, though. Oh, yeah. Um. And now they've flown out of my head. I, I, I didn't. Uh, re- I, did, I looked back at. Oh my god, he's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I, normally, I'm happy to stick around and and. and I love that. Sh- and of course, we yeah, we we had this technical schnafu, which is now all better. Now all better. More better. That's good. Oh, I know what it was. Um, are you still pre-recording for the weekend of the tenth, eleventh? Yes. Which I'd be happy to be to do a segment if you'd like. You know what I'd really like. Mm. Three segments. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. All right. No problem. So um, not this week, but maybe next week or the week after. I think I'm going to be almost, I think, Kyle, I believe I'm almost done all of the call parts. So now I'm just going to do some segment threes. Uh, okay. And uh, so that's nine minutes, 25 seconds. So uh, we have to Happy do to. a total of six, right? Three each day. Yeah. But if you did two, actually two is all I need. Then I could do one Saturday, one Sunday. And then we'll promote the sure. fact that you're going to be on the following weekend. Great. Fantastic. So I am going to be on the following weekend, and that's going to be great. You're going to be back for the weekend after that. Thanksgiving weekend, I guess, right? Yeah. I'll be working. Bummer. Bummer. You'll be working. I'll be working. Well, I can, I'll can. i still be on my regular segment on Saturday. Good. Uh, happy to. All right. Um, also, I just wanted to offer you, if you're interested. Yes. You have 30 seconds. Yeah. I'd be happy to come calibrate your TVs while you're gone, while I'm up there. Okay. <laughs> okay. You totally, can, totally up you to you. You know what? You can stay in my house. Oh, man. Would if that you be want. Great? Would you Would like to do that? Now? What was I thinking? Uh, stay in my house. You'll, it'll be empty. You I like it. All right. Talk to you later. Very Bye. good. Thanks. Well, hey, 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 how are you today, Leo Laporte, the tech guy? We're talking computers, the internet, cell phones and camcorders, home theater and giant phablets. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number, 888-827-5536, toll free from anywhere in the U.S. of A. Outside the U.S., you can also uh, Skype us, just Skype out. Uh, 8888 ask Leo. I don't know. Do we? Uh, I guess we uh, we lost uh, our caller. What was her name? Cynthia. Debbie. Debbie. I think we've lost her, but that's all right. That's all right. So, Debbie, call back when you figure it out. <laughs> how the phone? Actually, you know, just to finish that story, I locked myself out, set off the alarm. It's going boop boop boop. What was weird? It really makes you think that burglar alarms are useless because what was weird is, no, the police didn't show up, nor did Bay Alarm, the alarm company, call. Nothing happened. It just went boop, boop, boop for, you know, half an hour. while I So I called John, and my studio manager, and he drove down and unlocked it and turned it off. 
<laughs> so nothing. So uh, just why am I paying for a burglar alarm if nothing happens? <laughs> oh. And of course, but, but of course, if a if a if a, uh, a mouse scurries through the studio at two in the morning and sets off the alarm, you can believe better believe the burglar alarm company wakes me up and makes me go down there. I've done that several times. <laughs> Ka- Capiel, I think that's how you say it. Capiel in Lake Forest, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yes, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Um, here's, my, here's my question. I have a YouTube channel, and I make videos literally on a full-time basis. Wait a minute. This is, your, this is your living? Yeah, yeah. YouTube that, is my living. That's fantastic. And are you able, I mean, I don't want, you don't have to give me actual, you know, numbers, but you're able to make as much money as you would if you had a job? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If not more. That's amazing. What kind of videos yeah, do you make? It really changed my life. Holy like, I can cow. my passion of doing videos, and, you know, it's doing really well for well, me. Well, let's plug your channel. It's youtube.com yeah, slash KRS channel. KRS? Yeah, KRS channel. Channel. Uh, yeah. It's astronomy, astrology. Yeah, I teach Vedic astrology, like the ancient science of Vedic astrology, in a very fun way. This is so, awesome, and you can make a living doing this, and you even have a very big watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is one fancy watch, my friend. I can tell you're doing yeah, all right. I'm kind of fanatic about watches, so I have all sorts of watches. Me too, me too. That's how come I noticed it right away. Yeah. So you call yourself the Astrology Gandalf. I think that's so, so okay, so you, look it. You've done so many smart things here. The marketing is great. I love the picture on the front of you eating grapes. It means it makes no sense, but it's great. Yeah, exactly. Just a fun way to introduce this, you know, make astrology and get people to lose that ignorance about astrology, which is it really is not. It is really an in-depth thing that people don't really look at. So I try to tell them, look, it's the ancient science of India, which is Vedic astrology. It's far more powerful than your sun sign, moon sign. So I try to tell them that in a very fun way. I do parodies with the celebrity horoscopes, and I'm about to do a Christian Bale horoscope with Batman. So it's just all fun stuff. You and know, I, I see you're, you know, and this is critical too. You're using social media very effectively. You've got a Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, Google yeah, Plus. Pinterest is very helpful. It has been surprisingly very helpful to me. See, it's this is really intriguing. Uh, boy, what a good example. Now, and the money you make comes from ads that YouTube places on yeah. here. Yeah, that's the you don't you're not charging or, or you know, just, no no it's just YouTube whatever they put on you know that how, how interesting it is absolutely has changed my life in the past two years holy cow I cannot believe and you uh, now do you have a staff or is this just just you or no no just just me just me computer and you my do desk. have a PayPal donation button I notice on there and Google yeah, allows you yeah. to do that I guess yeah okay. And and so people can also give you more money if they if they really like what they're exactly. getting. Exactly for my research and you know for I have to travel and you know interview people. So how much of your income comes from PayPal donations and how much from Google advertising? Oh, no. PayPal donation is very little, literally like four percent of. Yeah, the you know it's funny. That's the same amount. Uh, <laughs> that's so interesting. You quote that number. That's what PBS reports. About four percent of their audience donates. I think four percent is a. It's the same for us too. There's four percent of anybody will donate, and the rest just want to consume it for free. But that's the beauty of this. YouTube puts ads on here. And exactly. So you know, in a way, I'm giving them free information, but at the same time, I'm getting something out of it. So what can I do to help you? Yes. Okay. So here's my thing. I was up to last week. I was shooting my videos with Nikon D90 which was really good in terms of the color depth of the image, but didn't have the audio, didn't have automatic lens focus, which right. uh, the D6100 has. So right. I bought that this week, and I made several videos. And the thing is, the color depth that I was getting with the D90 video is not there. Like the red is kind of looking like a pale red, not like that right. blood. It's not saturated like you want it. Yeah, so I'm wondering, is it the camera? Because I thought this was supposed to be a better camera than D90. I don't think it's the camera. Um, so it's probably uh, settings. Uh, now, the the video that's on the front page, is that with the D9100? 
No, 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 no. Um, that, yeah, that, uh, um, that's with a D9. You're driving in a car talking to a woman. That I've done with a, inside my studio format, like I have my banner in the back. Yeah. If you look at my browse, uh, if you browse my channel, yeah. um, it'll show you just like maybe 10 videos down. If you watch any videos after like the first five videos, you will see how the color saturation is versus the video that I've made this week. Okay. And you will see how the color of the red is really true red versus now the newer ones this week are kind of like this pale red. It's not yeah, even red is, I got to tell you, red is very difficult anyway. For uh -huh. video, for digital video, uh, for actually video cameras of, of any kind. So uh, unless you're really tied to the red, I might not use a saturated red. But I think also it's going to be lighting and it's going to be the settings in the camera. Uh, I would guess almost certainly that the camera is using uh, a more accurate sensor. If not the same sensor, a more accurate sensor. It's not going to be less. It's not going to be okay. less. So I would I would say adjust your settings on the camera, adjust your aperture um, maybe uh, go a half stop darker, uh, okay. and then I would perhaps, um, you know, you can always. What are you editing them in? I'm editing in Premiere uh, CS3. Okay. Adobe. So you've got a high end editor. You can get a, you know, get plugins like uh, Magic Bullet that will let you saturate better. Um, you might want to do some post processing. The thing is, I wasn't. Did do any of this with the D90 videos? It was just like I understand. Yeah, and it's some. It's part of it's what you're used to. Um, yeah. So it may be that you were used to a saturated red that was, believe it or not, less uh, natural, and now yeah. it's and now it's more natural, and now you want it back the old way. But you yeah. can certainly fix it in post production. Okay. You can you can saturate it more. Uh, uh, you could change. You know, one thing you might want to do. Uh, Bobo Mon's suggesting in the chat room. He's right. Is change the. If you're probably using an automatic white balance. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe change the white balance. Uh, okay. To a warmer white balance. That might. That might to give oh, you. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Okay. Take a look at the color uh, space. If you had set it to uh, a different color space earlier, you might want to check the settings in the old camera. Make sure that everything is the same. Okay. There are ways to fix this, you know, and uh, and I and I think it's either in post production or changing. I would play with the camera settings first because why why have to spend a lot of energy post production? But I'm just right, exactly. Yeah, I'm just right. so impressed. So now, are you a YouTube partner? How do you? Do you yeah. Okay. Yes, I've been a YouTube partner for about a year now. So you get more money as a YouTube partner than you would just as a regular publisher. Well, I just impressed as hell. Thank you, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I'm not weighing in on the content. <laughs> Look at everybody, you know, this is harmless. It's not, uh, he's not hurting anybody. I it think is it's cool. the I'm hottest topic it. in business. It doesn't hurt, I got to say, that he's kind of cute. And moving your uh, I would bet you anything Google Apps. that uh, and I'll tell you, he you has a strong female following. You get collaboration Don't you think? Like instant messaging, Scott, you're still there. Chat. You get it. <laughs> I, I, can't. I, forgot, I forgot to hang up. No, you can stay on as long as you want. I don't I don't mind. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm just I was just uh, you know in the chat room, you know, chatting away and and I was listening to you. If I hang up, I would have to, you know, go back well, and keep open listening, up. Well, keep listening then and keep chatting. It's quite all right. I'll let you In fact, I'll give you some time while I go go take a walk. Okay, very good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, chat room. Bitkeeper is a drummer. I, I always uh, appreciate meeting musicians, uh, being one myself. Uh, thank you, Thebod. Hey, Murray on travel. Uh, astrology has not fallen away. Uh, Beatmaster, what movies have I watched lately? Um, let's see. We saw Be uh, Trouble with the Curve, which is okay. It's pretty one-dimensional. Uh, but, you know, it was enjoyable. Uh, I also saw Looper, uh, which I wasn't as happy with as many people are. Uh, I love time travel stories, but, you know, it, it, it was pretty violent, and I'm not really into violent, so that was kind of a drag. I thought uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt did a great job impersonating Bruce Willis. They put a nose on him that had kind of the Bruce Willis 
nose and and he kind of did his lips kind of like that it was he did a good job with that i thought um you know but i just thought the whole premise of uh, time travel is invented and immediately outlawed and so only the major crime syndicate has it and they use it for assassination come on give me a break um uh, so yeah it, it was not that great it was it was weird it had a few interesting premises uh i'm with tom Merritt, by the way about time travel movies that um don't take into account multiple timelines so that when you go back in time you branch off to a different timeline because this one it's, it's all one timeline and bruce willis is kind of forgetting his the love of his life because things are changing and yet he, he didn't totally forget her so that was like not very believable um oh and we also went and saw um what was that cop movie um Ooh, now I can't remember it because it was so bad. Uh, End of Watch. Uh, it was so awful that my wife and I walked out after 15 minutes. I mean, it's all handheld camera and more than just handheld. It's as if it's supposed to be a little camera stuck on the guy's shirt as he's walking around. And it's like jiggling all over the place. And every other word was uh, S or F, if you know what I mean. And, uh, you know, it was... I, I swear we're like a sailor sometimes, but uh, that just got to be ridiculous. Um, so I, we walked out. It was just awful. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I wave back at Sarah Jane UK. How are you doing over there across the pond? Uh, what do I? Uh, what do I? What do I think of the Samsung Series Nine TVs? Uh, uh, they're great. They're just great. Um, as good as LED and LCD can get, at least edge lit. Uh, I will say I prefer backlit to edge lit in general, and I prefer plasma to LED or LCD. So there you go. Uh, I have not seen the new Ben Affleck movie, uh, Argo. I'm really looking forward to that. I really do want to see that. Um, I also want to see, um, Frank and Weenie and Hotel Transylvania to anime. Well, features. good luck. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Now I'm going to hang up. Thanks. Yeah, bye. I thought that was me playing the extra music, but that's why I just went to this. <laughs> All right. Cool. You're on. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo. That's the number. If you have a question, a comment, a suggestion, you want to talk high tech, man, that's all I like to do. I just high tech all the time. I live this stuff. I breathe it. It's a good gig. Love it. Andrew in Los Angeles. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Andrew. Hold on. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking the call. Sure. Um, when I switched to um, uh, when I switched to DSL, I had heard that. Uh, you should have a hardware fight. Get a router. It's a firewall. Yeah. I generally oh. I generally with DSL like a router for two reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. And often your DSL company gives you a DSL modem that is a router. Does it have, does the DSL modem have multiple connections in the back? Uh, yes. Yeah. So it's a router. Oh. So, the and the reason they do that is because then, I don't know if you remember in the early days of DSL, you had to run some special software on your machine with a password and a login. If you put it in the router, and it will be in the router settings because you do need a password and a login for DSL, um, then it does it automatically. You don't have to think about it. And you get the benefit of a firewall. So all routers are firewalls, even if it doesn't say so in the box. So here's here's my question, okay? Yep. I've or all these live long days and so my router died and so my question is is it okay to just uh go to, to not have a router and just rely on like nod 32 and uh should i use the windows firewall okay great questions uh first of all i think you do have a router if your dsl modem uh, merely connects to the wall where the phone jack is and then has a wire single wire ethernet wire coming out into your computer Th or then that's then then you would need a router. But if it has multiple Ethernet jacks on the back, three or four Ethernet jacks in the back, it is a router. Hmm. And yeah. most of the time they do that because they don't want to. They they it, they can dispense with special software on your PC. It doesn't matter anymore. So if so, then you are getting all the benefits of a hardware firewall. What is a firewall? Firewall 
is a, a and actually it's named after uh, the walls that go in buildings uh, between two separate rooms that fire can't go through, right? It's brick or metal. So it does the same thing for the internet. The internet, presuming the internet is a house of fire, it's dangerous out there on the internet. You don't want random people just wandering through your internal network. So the firewall is a barrier to them. It only allows certain kinds of traffic in and, by the way, out. That's what your router does. Even though it may not be billed as a firewall, a router is a dumb device. See, remember, the thing that's on the public internet is an attack surface. So you don't want to put a computer there because there's too many ways it can be attacked. A firewall's stupid. I mean, a router is stupid. It doesn't know much. It doesn't have all, you know, it's not running Windows. It's running some silly little operating system, the basic, basic stuff. So when, a, for instance, an attacker comes to your router, your, in this case, your DSL modem slash router, uh, and and says, I would, uh, I would like to share files with you. Your router goes, I don't know what that is. What are you talking about? And ignores it, just drops the packet. It, so that's good news. It only, in fact, allows conversations that were initiated from within your network. So that gives you some some significant protection. And in fact, I think everybody, even if they only have, you need a router because if you have multiple computers on a single internet connection, that's what a router is used for, to share the internet. But even if you only had one computer in your house, I would have a router. So if your router died uh, and you didn't have a modem that allowed multiple computers on it, then I would say get a router. But you do, I think, have a router. Now, the next question is, should I run a software firewall? And yes, you should. The Windows firewall is fine. You don't need anything more than that. And what? why would you run that? I already have a firewall. Well, it's to protect you from anything that is inside your network. So let's say a friend comes over with his laptop, and it's just loaded with you know, Trojan horses and viruses. Your friend, is, your friend likes to visit you know, hacker.com. And he's just, his system is corrupt as heck. If he joins your network, all those little beasties on his computer are going to say, hey, we're on a network, everybody out! And they're going to try to get into your system. If you're running a Windows firewall, it blocks internal bad guys. Somebody who comes over with a laptop. So that's very valuable. And I would leave it on. And the nice thing is, because it's the Windows firewall, it's, it doesn't slow you down much. It's built into the operating system. It's very simple. The Windows firewall is not a very good firewall. For instance, it doesn't in any way block outbound traffic. But it is on by default in all mo modern versions of Windows. That was a huge change Microsoft made way back to with Service Pack 2 on Windows XP. And instantly, just the fact that it turned the firewall on by default changed the security landscape dramatically. That single move by Microsoft, turning on the firewall by default, calmed things down immensely. So I, 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 I do think you should leave it on if it's on. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it's not as powerful as a hardware firewall because it's on your computer and, you know, your computer has other vulnerabilities. So it's nice to have the hardware firewall and then a software firewall on. And, and then I think you're pretty good. But ultimately, nothing is going to overcome your bad behavior. So you, the most important thing, you know, security software is great, firewalls are great, but the most important thing is for you to be smart about what you do. For instance, if you get one of those phony calls that says, uh, you know, they're from Microsoft, they, they say, I'm from Windows, and you have a problem, let us install some software on your system, and you say, yeah, sure, that sounds good. That's a bad guy who's just talked you into bypassing all your security and putting something on your system. So, you know, if you if you go to a website and it gives you a pop-up saying, hey, I see you have viruses. Why don't you install this uh, software? And you go ahead. You've just bypassed every form of security you put on there. You can't, you can't, you can't get around your own bad behavior. Even if you have a hardware firewall, a software firewall, <laughs> ESET and all that stuff, it doesn't matter. So but just be, you know, just be a little bit smart about that. Now, I think we got Debbie back. Let me go to Debbie, see if the echo is all better. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Debbie. Okay. <laughs> I guess we could listen in. Debbie, are you there? No, all right. I don't want to listen into her personal conversations. You ever do that? What do they call it? A, a butt dial, right? It happens all the time. The last call you made on your cell phone for some reason, you know, this is, it's still on there. And for some reason, you're sitting on your phone and the screen comes on. 
and it dials that number. I get, I get, I get from my kid. I get my kids get. I, for some reason, I get a lot of. I got a butt dial last night, and it's very tempting, isn't it, to just listen and see what's going on? But I don't. I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> Now, by the way, 40 seconds have passed, and Debbie's picked up the phone and saying, what? <laughs> August in San Diego, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, August. Hello, Leo. Hi, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have uh, bought a used uh, Dell Studio uh, 1569, and I absolutely love it. It worked great for a while. And but now um, I think I did a Windows update, and it, the, the machine will not shut down, and it will not restart. It works, but you just can't shut it down and restart it. Yes, exactly. When, and when, I it, tried to do. Uh, I went back and tried to look for to, to like roll it back to a restore point. Yeah. And all my restore points are gone. Uh oh, that's a bad sign. It's Windows XP. I'm almost sure of it. We'll talk about it when we come back. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. This portion of the Tech Guy Show brought to you by our phone system. I'm not kidding. <laughs> we got. I love our phone system. You heard me talk about Ring Central. So when we built the studio, and by the way, this studio, it's just been so great. We just love it. We've been here more than a year now. But one of the things when, you know, I'm now a biz, I'm small businessman, and i got to run a business. And, uh, I, you know, I never really thought about this when we were in the cottage because it just kind of happened. Everybody was using their cell phone, and now I realize. In fact, in the cottage... We had one phone line and cordless phones, and that was it, and a number. And the phone rang, and whoever was near a phone picked it up and said, yeah, yeah what, what is it? Well, we're a little bit bigger now. we got 25 employees, probably more than that. I haven't counted lately. we got a big studio. People, producers are making calls. We're making sales calls, business calls, production calls. We, we need a phone system. And I thought, I don't want to deal with this. So fortunately, I have a very good IT guy, Russell Tammany, Exponentia Systems. Recommend him. And I said, he said, you know, we could, you could just, I've installed Ring Central on a bunch of my clients and they like it. Would you like to? I said, well, how, how does it work? He says, it's cloud based. There's no PBX. I remember the PBX from uh, the old days and I, I didn't want to program it and all that. He said, no, 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 it's all, it's all digital. I said, that's good, I like that. It's all cloud-based, but it has all the features. In fact, it's more feature-rich than a PBX system. For instance, you, you can receive faxes, and the faxes come as email in your inboxes to whoever it's addressed to. Uh, there's cell phone software for Ring Central on Android and iOS, so that means our, our staff puts it on their phone. They make calls. Build, it builds to us, and it shows up as our business number when they're making those calls from anywhere. You can have their extension ring their cell phone. Voicemails go in the inbox and the email. I mean, just on and on. It's all the modern stuff that you want. But you still get, I'm going to reach over and get it, you still get a desk phone. Just a normal, you know, a phone, a real phone. That, that acts just like a real phone. And there's a phone tree. And you can call our 800 number, 800-605-TWIT. And you'll get the Ring Central system. You get the whole Ring. You know, you get the Twip music, and it's great. It's all, and I do it all on, online. So I want you to try it for thirty days. It, uh, Twenty dollars per user per month. There are no startup fees. The phones, even they've got a great deal just for our listeners on the podcast. Um, when you buy one desk phone, you get a second phone free, up to twenty phones. So you can call eight hundred five four three ninety nine eighty. Just checking the music. Eight hundred five four three ninety nine eighty. Or go to ringcentral.com and use the promo code TWIT. If you're setting up an office or you're tired of the PBX in the basement, you want to do something modern, ringcentral.com, offer code TWIT, or call 800-543-9980. They'll give you a 30-day free trial, no risk, free trial. We love it. We love our Ring Central phone system. All right, back to the Tech Guy Show. The show. I'm going to stroke my phone a little bit. Um, well, I've replaced the iPhone 5 with the Galaxy Note 2. Given the choice between the... You know, the S3 is not good on Wi-Fi. Now, maybe it was my S3. The radio was weak, I think. And I've heard other people complain about that. So, boy, I do love... Wow, oh, what's, what's going on there? Oh, there is some neat stuff in this. The software Samsung's put in here. 
So it just showed me there's this thing where if we reach for the phone, it, it does this thing. Let me see if I can get it to do it. Where it shows you how many messages, how many calls you've missed. It's just like it's just like a little thing that shows up like a ghost. I see now it's not doing it. I guess because I did it. Before the unlock screen. Oh, I got the keys software running. Um, I'm just I'm, I'm enamored of this beautiful screen too. They've really done a nice job. It's lower res than the uh, previous. Night. So our caller before the break gave me some th- symptoms that I don't like. One cotton picking bit. So he has. I'm almost positive Windows XP. He installed a hot fix. All of a sudden, he can't shut down his computer. And when he looks, and this is the this is the giveaway. When he looks at System Restore, there are no restore points left. Now, it is possible. <laughs> it is possible that something very strange happened. His hard drive maybe started to die and, and things started disappearing. But it's far more likely that he's got a bad guy on his system. And the reason I say that is one of the first things bad guys do is they delete restore points so that he can't, that you can't um, go back and get rid of him. Now, uh, thank you, Web4496, who's giving me a link to a page that you should, should certainly know about. How do I reset Windows Update? That's actually not the problem here, but this is a good thing to know about. Uh, it's an automated fix-it that lets you get your Windows Update going again. Um, and it might be worth a try. The problem is not so much his Windows Update. His computer will not turn off, and his computer will not shut down. By the way, why would a bad guy want that? Well, maybe he's using your computer to send spam. Maybe he's using your computer to attack other computers. He doesn't want you to turn it off. And you know what would happen? Oh. Do not disturb on my phone. I picked up my phone and now it's ringing. You know what? You know, you know what would uh, what the guy would like is for most and this is what most people will do. They'll go, "Oh, hmm. Can't turn it off. Okay, well, at least it works. And they keep using it for months while he keeps using it behind your back for months, attacking other computers. So I think it's highly likely that your computer has been corrupted by a bad guy. You've got a Trojan horse on there or a malware of some kind. And those are two good, very good um, examples very good examples of what bad guys would do to your system. I can't promise that's what's wrong, but I suspect that's what's wrong. So what you need to do now is uh, fix it. And in my opinion, the only sensible way to do this is to start over. So I hope you have your Windows Restore disks, your system recovery disks. They either came with a computer or you were supposed to make them when you got the computer. And, of course, nobody ever does that. But I hope you did that. And uh, if you did, then run them and wipe the computer. Start over. You want to back up your data first since it's running. That's good. You can. Just your data. Make sure you're, you know, your all your documents, and things you don't want to lose, email, whatever. But you gotta wipe that. You gotta start over. Wipe the computer. Reinstall Windows. If you've got the recovery disk, that's the best way to do it. It'll get you back to the day the computer came ho- came home. Then next thing, very important. Next thing you want to do is run Windows. You know, get online obviously, but then run Windows Update until there is nothing more, no more critical updates. You you just run it and run it and run it till you can't update anymore. Why you do that? Well. Because until you do that, it's not safe. Every one of those updates, those critical updates, is patching a security vulnerability. Probably one that, maybe one that was used to attack your computer. So you got to do that. Then you can start using the computer. Reinstall your applications. I do it slowly. You don't need probably half the ones you had installed. You'll notice one thing right away. Your computer's faster and more reliable. Restore your data. And then... Uh, and then uh, don't do whatever it is you did <laughs> again. <laughs> Chris in Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo, thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I wanted to mention something uh, that I found in the App Store. It's an amazing find. It's called Voice Camera Pro. And what it does is it allows you to control the camera with your voice. It's simply amazing. This is an iOS program? Right, it's in the App Store. It's an application. So if anyone out there has a disability or they they want to control the camera, they can now do it with their voice, and it's um, it, it works beautifully. You can instantly upload it to Facebook or Twitter or whatever you want. 
it's absolutely amazing. This is cool. Two ninety nine, uh, iPhone uh, or any iOS device with a camera, obviously, which would be the newer iPads or an iPod Touch. Uh, you could say one, two, three, four, and then take the picture, which is good because that's what you're saying anyway, right? To smile, cheese. Can you program the uh, state the, what it, the commands or does it? Have right, yeah, and you can program your own commands so you can actually have it uh, work with the word you want to say. Right. This yeah, is good. Absolutely. So the the built-in commands camera launches the camera. Uh, so you use Siri to do this? Do you have to start Siri? No, you don't have to start Siri. You just uh, launch the application and it's good to go. Wow, really neat. One takes yeah. a photo, two takes two photos, three takes three photos, four takes four photos. You could switch cameras, turn the flash on or off. Wow, this is great. Great tip. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Leo. Have a good one. All right, Chris. You too. Two ninety nine on the App Store. Voice Camera Pro by The Sanctuary. Neat idea. Kathy called us last Sunday. Hi, Kathy. Hey, how are you? You were you were the people. Remind me, but I think you were the one that Verizon cut your your fiber. You cut your your copper. Right. Well, um, they they keep sending me letters saying that that I need to upgrade from copper to fiber optic and. I guess the the ultimate question is: Is that what they intend to do with everybody? No, because they just want you to do. Now those now do they do those letters say you should? We'd love it, or do they say you must? Uh, they claim that I quote need to because of how my line is old and needs to be upgraded. Yeah, so that I'll yeah, it would sure be nice if you would. So understand that what Veri what Verizon has done, and by the way, they're not doing it anymore. It was very expensive. I think it was five thousand dollars per customer is that they put fiber optic cables in your neighborhood. And the only way that they can recoup the expense of putting fiber optics down your street is if you switch over. So you're like the person, you know, when they're building the skyscraper and there's one little house that won't sell their land? That's <clears> you. <throat> Uh oh! <laughs> Nothing wrong. No, no. They, you don't. Ha you can ignore those letters if you want. Do whatever you want. Now, I personally think they're probably right. You might like fiber better. I mean, it's faster internet. It might be more reliable. Yeah. Well, I'm just using it for just the landline. Well, that's the thing. I don't like the strong arm tactics. Would it cost you more for fiber? They claim no. That I could just keep it at the regular what I have going now, which is an expensive package uh, like freedom package and all but the thing is i just don't like the idea of once they do that that they're going to put me on battery um and they and i got different stories on that and that's what made me nervous oh see now this is interesting so now one of the things so that triple a batteries that you <laughs> and then who's got it said yeah. no to get them to come out and they replace put a, they put a big lithium ion battery in there so one of the so let me explain what happened see uh when when we designed the uh the uh, long distance and the, the phone system in the united states uh originally of course it was private industry still was you know it's ma bell but the government heavily regulated it and 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 for reasons of national security and, and safety of, of the customers, they did some really good things. For instance, your phone, your old copper phone, works without power. Now, it doesn't work if you have a cordless phone or whatever, but if you just have a plain old phone that plugs into the wall and, and not into a power socket, that'll work even in a blackout because the power comes from the phone company. That was intentional. That's not an accident. That was intentional so that customers, even in a disaster, would still have access to their phone service. And that phone service was built very robustly so it would survive earthquakes, floods, and so forth. Now, But now what Verizon wants to do is take all that antiquated old copper out of the ground and replace you with Internet service. We'll talk about that in a second. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So let me ask, because I am not familiar with... When Verizon puts Fios in, are they essentially giving you, like uh, Comcast does, triple play stuff? It's a, it's VoIP over copper? Or over fiber, rather? Who has a Fios? Okay. So basically now it's VoIP. Yeah. So, um... 
And I and I remember when we had briefly, and I hated it, Comcast phone system. Boy, I had a fun experience with Comcast. Jeez, what a crappy company. I'll talk about it on the air. Like they're all crappy because they're they're monopolies. And why should a monopoly treat customers like uh, like somebody who can go somewhere else? They can't. Mm. So Comcast guy comes out. Remember, I was telling you this story. The Comcast guy comes out, and um, he says, "Well, Comcast recognizes your, mo-, you know, he calls the these guys are all contractors." So he says, "Well, I, you know, call Comcast. Your modem's fine. I bought a Doxis modem of uh, uh, Veris modem because I don't want to use the Comcast modem. So I brought that with me, and they, re- they said, "Yeah, yeah, that's on your inventory list." But we don't know anything about your DVR. I said, "Well, I brought it with me." They said to bring it with you. No, we don't know anything about it. So I, I, I have one DVR. It's component only. <laughs> I said, well, I made it. You change, they changed my... It was so horrible. So I had an appointment because I missed the playoffs because of this. So I had an appointment Saturday morning because I knew the playoffs were that night. I wanted to watch the Giants beat the Reds. Saturday morning they were going to come. Then some guy calls from Comcast. Turns out he's an independent reseller who calls and says, well, you want two DVRs? We can't do that appointment. We'll have to do it Monday. I've been told, I think the chat room told me, yeah, they just want the appointment under their name because then they get the money. So he canceled my original appointment said, well, we can't do it if you want two DVRs. Okay, move it to Monday. Then the guy, then, you know, the con- this is a separate guy. So now now this guy, Chris, has my money, my deal. But I'm going to save you a lot of money. And he did give me a good, like, starter package. So the, co- the tech comes out and with one component-based DVR. And I said, well, <laughs> the whole reason I moved the appointment is so you'd set up both DVRs. And I said, what's with the component? <laughs> I tweeted this, by the way, and I got a call from Comcast executive, the executive, I don't know what they call them. This is, but like the, supposedly, I'm supposed to be honored that the Comcast executive hit team called me. But mostly she was pissed off that I was tweeting about it. And then she tells me, oh yeah, most of our boxes are component. We don't have HDMI. I said, well, it's funny because every box I've ever had from you over the last eight years is HDMI. I'm shocked to hear this because I don't want a component DVR. I want two DVRs. Well, it's not on the... So now, of course, what do I get? I get an automated call from Comcast the next day. You have our DVR box. We must have it back by Monday or we will charge you. Yeah, I know it was executive. But what's funny is... She was pissed. It was more like, don't tweet this, <laughs> than what can we do to make this right? She said, well, you're getting $39 a month. What are you complaining about? I said, it's not $39 a month. She said, well, yeah, plus oh, Showtime and HBO. Well, <laughs> what are you complaining about? I'm tweeting because you're crap, because you're a monopoly. I was, I, I was blunt with her. <laughs> and I tweeted all of that, of course. And I'm going to say it now on national radio. You little. Oh, what happened to my caller? She's gone. Hmm. What was her name? Kathy. We do have her number. You want me to get her back? Oh, that's all right. I'll just talk to her. Famous board game is now Monopoly the TV game. Oh no! <laughs> is it a four hour TV show? Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888 ask Leo. So we're talking to Kathy, poor Kathy. So she has regular copper phone service. She does not have internet. Verizon keeps sending her letters saying, you know, that copper, <laughs> it's rusting away in the ground. You really should switch to Fios. Uh, which is their new fiber service. Now, it doesn't cost any more, but it has one little disadvantage, and that's what I was talking about. Because we designed our phone system for emergencies, for crisis, because we understood that that was what a phone system was for, it works even when the power's out and the Internet's out. Will your Fios work when the power's out? No. Well, it, it's battery backed up, but the battery lasts only a few hours. Will it work when the Internet's out? No. No. So, in fact, you're right, Kathy, to be a little concerned. 
it's going to be fine phone service. It's going to cost you the same, but they do put a lithium ion battery in your garage where it's hooked up that will keep the phone service going in case of an outage. Not forever, just for a few hours. And yes, if the internet goes out regionally or, uh, you know, in that area, it, so is your phone service. So just ignore those annoying letters. They want you to move to Fios because they want to get rid of the copper. They would cut the copper, by the way. There's another reason I think that Verizon wants you to cut the copper. You, you currently could go to DSL Extreme or some other internet service provider over your copper. They don't have that same obligation over Fios. So it's a way of them essentially in sealing their monopoly. Uh, we got to fight the fight on these. These guys are unregulated at this point. The gov- gov- Congress doesn't care. They get more, believe me, they get so much, uh, so many campaign donations from Verizon, very active, all the telcos are, that they regulate in their favor, not ours. Your local public utilities commission, they care, but they're not. They're limited in what they can do. They don't have much enforcement capability. Budgets are tight. We're basically, we got to fight the fight ourselves. I was telling the story in the break to the chat room about my, my run-in with Comcast. Oy. These companies are monopolies, so they don't care about customer service. They pretend to. You know, I tweeted something negative about Comcast, so I got a call from the Comcast executive offices. But, you know, I really got the, the feeling she was more mad at me. You know, what I would expect, and I'm sure what they normally would do is, oh, we're so sorry you're having trouble. What can we do to make it better? We'd love to help you. And when Frank Eliason was working at Comcast, he was the guy who created Comcast's kind of Twitter response team. Uh, that's really what they did. They took care of people. More, I get the sense from her, hey, what are you complaining about? Get off of the Twitter. Don't Twitter about us. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we would really appreciate it if you would stop tweeting about us. So uh, she explained some stuff to me, which was wrong. Like she said, oh, yeah, we don't use HDMI cable boxes. We're, we're mostly component. What? This is this is 2012. And by the way, I've had the HDMI cable boxes from Comcast for years. The other thing that was a problem is they changed my appointment because I wanted two DVRs. Then the guy shows up with one DVR and it's component only. And, and they didn't recognize the HDMI box they told me to bring to the new place. And now I got a call from Comcast saying, hey, you've got our box. Wait a minute. You didn't recognize it? No, we want it back or we're going to charge you on Monday. <laughs> like, these companies, Verizon, Comcast, AT&T, they m- may not technically be monopolies anymore, but they haven't figured that part out yet. And I'll tell you, even my cable installer said, yeah, I'm the most hated guy. <laughs> <laughs> He, by the way, he does not work. Comcast does not use, at least in my area, their own employees. They contract this out. This poor guy, I feel sorry for him. He's got to deal with them too. 8888 asks Leo, what can we do? You know, what can we do? We got. I mean, there seems like there, there's got to be a better way. What was it Lily Tomlin used to say? We don't, we don't care. We don't have to. We're the phone company. <laughs> That was that was 40 years ago, and it hasn't gotten any better. <laughs> Unbelievable. I asked the cable star. I said, "Well, so they don't recognize this box? No, it's not on your uh, it's not on your account. Oh, so I could just keep this DVR forever? Not that I want it. Well, I don't know. That's between you and them. Well, they don't recognize it. it's not on my account. Oh, I guess it is because they call me then the next day saying, "Where's our box?" <laughs> But if you really want some customer support, my recommendation, tweet it. Apparently, they pay attention to Twitter. For some reason, I just don't understand. They don't want a black spot on their Twitter. I loved it when my Comcast cable installer... Don't you love it that Comcast changed the name to Xfinity because they realized people hated Comcast so much? Oh, no, it's not. Uh, I'm Xfinity now. Not fooling me. He said, oh, it's okay. We're gonna, you're going to have charter soon, too. So... <laughs> Oh, I don't think charters, any, I don't think anybody's any better. They're all terrible. Christy, Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Christy. Hi, Leo. Thank you for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Um, I actually have an Acer Aspire. It's a 7560, and it's an AMD quad-core processor. Um, I wanted to know, um, I had some McAfee, you know, it was it was preloaded with McAfee. For yeah, everybody gets McAfee because mm-hmm. all the companies get a deal. You know, McAfee pays Dell and HP and everybody like 20 bucks and then they put it on your computer. But it's a terrible antivirus. Don't use it. 
Right. So now, um, so it, it expired. So I'm looking to uh, get a new one, and I wanted to know once I get a new one, do I have to like uh, deinstall that other program? Yes. Or how do I go about doing you that? You can only one run one antivirus at a time. This is, you okay. know, this is one of the problems I have with computer uh, companies is they load these. And they make money, right? They load these computers right. up. Microsoft doesn't like this either, by the way. They Microsoft has a, a program called Microsoft Signature Computers. You pay more for them because there's no junk on them. <laughs> and by the way, nobody makes them because <laughs> they want them. They make a lot of money. They charge, you know, whatever, 5 10 20 bucks to each of these companies. They load your computer up. So, yes, there are better antiviruses. One of our sponsors, ESET, makes a better one. Even Microsoft's free one. Microsoft Security Essentials is better. And that's available at Microsoft.com slash Security Essentials. So I would recommend if you if one of the problems I have, by the way, with this is you only get a few months of McAfee, whatever, six months. And then if you want to more, you pay for it. Most people probably just sit there and don't update it. And they think they've got an antivirus, but really they don't because it's not updated. So don't do that. Uninstall McAfee. Get, you know, if you don't want to spend any money, Microsoft Security Essentials that updates automatically. Uh, okay. If you if you're willing to spend a little money for, I think a better program, Nod32 from ESET is a better program. Uh, and then and then and then uh, just uninstall it. Just get rid of it. Now, what will be the difference between an antivirus suite and an antivirus program? The, the suite costs more. Okay. Don't get the suite. Get the. Now, he said it's not going to like me because they sell, everybody sells a suite, which, you know, got a lot of extra doohickeys. You don't need that. Get the, just the antivirus. Now, and I frequently use like hot spots, like at Starbucks. Um, w would this be sufficient for that? Yeah. Now, really, the hotspot doesn't isn't more prone to viruses. There are other issues with hotspots. People can snoop on you, for instance. Okay. Uh, so, um, that's a different thing entirely. You know what? When I have to take a break for news, Christy. I'm going to hang up on you, but keep listening. When we come back, I will talk about, because this is a much more involved uh, problem, how to protect yourself at a public place. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello. Good to see you. Wait a minute. They've given me a magic card. The Edisons are here. You know when you call you, you hear the ad right now? guy recommends. I've always told you Epson printers. I'm a big uh, okay. John and Linda J and John and Barbara, are you to are all together? And you came up from Ventura? Well, that's very confusing. I, I would like you to change... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh! But she got the good seat, see? She got the throne. And you're up from... All from Ventura? Great. On vacation? How fun. And which one of you dragged the rest here? No. He did, John. John's the geek, right? And he made all three of you come here? Well, you better buy them a nice lunch. <laughs> well, Petaluma is a cute little town. I hope you enjoy it. There's great antique shopping here. for Well, for California. And um, some very good restaurants. We have a nice. This is a nice little town. It's a nice day. The wine country's up north. You can go to Napa, Sonoma. Yeah. Here, I'll turn up the, uh, the, the Seinfeld theme. You're tuned to Premier Channel Seven. Leo Laporte, Are the you, tech Johnny, guy, any will begin to at Thomas Alva. From Premier Radio Network. <laughs> it's a great name, though. Wow. And are you any relation to John Stewart? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We've got the bills of the Edisons. Oh, that's neat. Where'd you go to med school? Wow, that's great. That's really neat. So you're both physicians? That's great. What kind of a heart attack? Can I have a heart attack? What kind of... <laughs> <Won't help. laughs> You'll set a bone, though. All right. Well, anybody breaks their leg. We did have a guy, actually. It's the only accident we've ever had here. A guy got up, and he had, the headphones were wrapped around his legs, and he went for a tumble. We, he actually he had to go to the emergency room. I think he uh, sprained his knee. So. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. That's where my dad taught. I lived in Providence for a long time. I was a paleontologist. Yeah, taught geology. Probably when you were there. He left, he left. We moved out here in 71. He was there from 65, 64 to 71. You preceded him. Okay. Maybe, maybe earlier. When did we move? He was a grad student at Columbia, and I was born in New York, and then we moved there when I was about three or four. So actually, no, maybe 60. 58. Class of 58? Yeah. I was going to say, you don't look like the class of 50. <laughs> Somewhere I have the Yale 50th reunion hat, which I stole from an old guy. <laughs> They're easier to mug, those 50th reunion guy. 57. That was when I... Uh, when I went to my 35th. Oh. Uh, Dr. Fred. Who's Dr. Fred? From Premier Radio Network. Doc, Mark and Boss said, you know Dr. Fred? Too. Our chat room is random. I don't. I would just ignore them. Going to a fundraiser, huh? Rural Urbanite? We'll have fun. All right. I'll tell you one way I raise funds. Gazelle.com. You know about Gazelle.com? Oh, I love Gazelle is a way that you can uh, you can sell your old gadgets and get new gadgets easily, simply, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com. So what do you, you want a Galaxy Note, right? I know you do now that I've talked about it. You want to get rid of that iPhone 4S, buy something. Is it AT&T? Let's say AT&T. It's a uh, 32 gig, uh, 205 bucks. Awesome. Put that in the box. Actually, you know what? I, uh, I wanted to sell my... Um, my Galaxy S3 here. Let's see what that's that's worth. It's a factory unlocked because I bought bought it overseas. I spent a lot of money. Oh, wait a minute. My Note, too. So let's sell the Note. It's in good condition. No water damage. What's that? Whoa, 262. So now I'm 462. I might be able to pay for. And then I'm going to sell the uh, Samsung Galaxy also unlocked S3. It's white, 16 gigs. Good condition. Next, free of water damage. Who's doing the math? I think I have enough. That's more than enough to pay for my uh, note, too. So this is how it works. Now, these quotes are good for 30 days, which is really handy. That means that uh, if you haven't yet decided to buy, get the quote now because it's only going to go down in value, i got to tell you. One million gadgets traded. Gazelle has paid out almost $50 million to over 300,000 customers. That's how good this is. Whatever is gathering dust, your Apple TV, your Apple monitor, MacBook, iMac, iPod, iPad, cell phone, iPhone, don't let it gather dust. Get some money for it. Go to Gazelle. They'll send you a check, PayPal. My recommendation, though, get that Amazon gift card because they bump it 5%. They give you back the, they rebate the Amazon affiliate fee. Don't, uh, don't sit on it. Keep it moving. Gazelle, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com. By the way, they they pay the uh, shipping on anything worth more than a buck, so you don't even have to pay for the shipping. Just throw it all in a box and they'll ship it to you. Gazelle dot com. Well, a good day to you. Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk about computers, the internet, cell phones, camcorders, MP3 players, home theater, and all that jazz. Anything with a chip in it. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the number. 888-827-5536. Our website is techguylabs.com. You'll find a link there to the chat room. Show notes for this show and the previous 916 Tech Guy shows. are Everything you need to know. It's all there, techguylabs.com. Uh, uh, before the break, uh, and I wanted to have enough time to really uh, do this right. We, we had a caller who said uh, she spent a lot of time at Starbucks online and, and was wondering if her antivirus was sufficient to protect her, and it's not. Um, you should be aware of the fact that there are potential problems when you are on a shared wa- network. You're, when you're on a Wi-Fi hotspot, or you're traveling and you've plugged into the network, even if it's hardwired at the hotel, um, you're on a shared network. One of the one of the things that's fun to do if you're in a hotel and you plug into the Ethernet is 
uh, just browse the network and see who else, what other computers you can see. You can usually see dozens of other computers. If you've got a Macintosh, you can often see other people's music collections broadcasting over the hotel's network. I've even been able to play music. Now, I haven't gone any farther because I don't want to hack their computers, but if you can play a song from somebody's computer over a hotel network, it's likely you'd also be able to get into that computer and start looking at some files. So you've you got to be a little bit careful. You're on a shared network. So the oh, that, well, there's one more thing. If you're on a wireless network, you're broadcasting whenever you're visiting a website or sending email or whatever. You're actually, all that data is floating through the air. And a, a bad guy with sufficient, sufficient sophistication might be able to capture it, snoop on it. Here's the worst case scenario, in my opinion. Uh, you use an email service, and there's still many out there, that doesn't encrypt the password when you log in. Your computer logs in automatically. You're not even entering the password. But it just logs you into your email, right? Every 10 minutes, right? Doesn't your computer get the email every few minutes? You go to your email program, it's already there. Well, in order to do that, it's sending out the login and the password. And if you're not, if you're using, for instance, your internet service provider's email, in many cases, if it's not a great ISP, that's not protected. Some online uh, email services don't use HTTPS, secure HTTP. So in those cases, your email login and password are just floating through the air. I'll never forget, I was on a cruise ship a few years ago. Um, one of these geek cruises that I do. I'm doing another one next month, uh, every year. And uh, there, there's a guy who goes on these cruises all the time. Nice, nice guy, friend of mine, named Randall. He's kind of a hacker guy, and he sidles up to me on the first day of the cruise with a piece of paper, and he gives it to me. And I, he says, "Is this your password?" And I open it up, and there's my email password. I said, "What the heck?" He said, "You know, you're broadcasting that throughout the entire ship." <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> I, I had a little talk with Randall. I explained he probably should tell people at the meet and greet at the beginning of the cruise instead of sidling up to them with their passwords. It'd be better just to say, hey, by the way, <laughs> you might want to be careful. So if now, fortunately, if you use Gmail or some, some more modern system nowadays, they use encryption and, and you're safe. But this is the worst case scenario. Not that they're watching where you're surfing, but that they catch your email password and you didn't know it. When's the last time you changed your email password? Never. So if somebody got it two years ago, they could have been reading your email all this time. Now you might say, well, that's okay. There's nothing in my email. Yeah, well, they could also be changing passwords. How do you, where does your password recovery go? Does it go to your email? So that is the worst case scenario. You could, if a, if a guy really were a bad guy and he got your email password and login, you're kind of not in great shape. So my suggestion is to check with your ISP or use Gmail, Google's mail service, or another, I think Yahoo Mail now offers it, uh, so does Outlook.com. Make sure you're using secure logins. You can use, you know, if you're buying something on Amazon, that's going to be secure. The credit card number is going to travel securely. That's protected. Your bank is doing it. If you're just surfing to regular sites, you know, reading the Washington Post, they can see what you're doing, but do, do, I don't know if that matters. Keep in mind that when you're on a public access spot or you're in a hotel, if you travel, uh, that anybody on the same network as you or anybody with sufficient uh, interest can capture your transmissions over Wi-Fi or over the Ethernet and look at what you're doing. So just keep that in mind when you visit. You know, who cares if they know that you're reading the, the New York Times? Um but but I would be very careful if you uh, if you your email program for instance is not sending the passwords encrypted. Now if you are really se seriously secure uh, curious about this or, or or concerned about your security, you can protect everything you do using something called a VPN, a virtual private network. Uh, and there are th uh, third party uh, solutions for this um, that will uh, for a small fee, a small monthly fee. Um, let you use their service. And what happens as a result is um, nobody can see anything that you're doing. Uh, and that works That works pretty well. I'll give you a list. Probably somebody in the chat room has uh, some recommendations for VPNs you can use. Uh, I also have a little box that I bought for 99 bucks. Gave me a year's service with one of the uh, VPN services that that VPN then means that when I use that box anywhere, I'm always secure 
There's ways to do this if you really need to be secure. Uh, OpenVPN, the company OpenVPN, actually runs one called PublicVPN uh, that does a very nice job. PublicVPN.com. They don't charge you. Well, I guess they do charge you. They charge you uh, six ninety five a month or seventy bucks a year. Um, there are many of them like this, um, and I don't think you need one. But if you don't use one, you should be very aware of what you're sending, whether it's encrypted, and understand that anything that's not encrypted is visible to anybody. There was a program uh, called Fire Sheep uh, that was uh, put out last year. It was a plug-in for uh, Mozilla, the Mozilla browser. Uh, it's, let me see if it's still out there. It came out uh, two years ago now. And um, Fire Sheep was kind of amazing. Fire Sheep, you'd go into a Starbucks with Fire Sheep running and you could see all the people who were on Facebook, Twitter, Google, Flickr. And until the days of HTTPS, you could log in as them. Just post something on their Facebook feed just for fun. <laughs> That's a little scary. Fire Sheep is free and, uh, and widely downloaded. I think they've down millions of copies have been downloaded. Um. 2.3 million copies have been downloaded. That means there's several million people out there who could do this. My friend Steve Gibson, as a security guru, was thrilled. He said, I said, Steve, this is horrible. Why are you thrilled? He said, because this will make companies like Facebook, Twitter, and Google encrypt their traffic, protect you. And in fact, that's what happened. Less than a year later, Facebook started offering HTTPS encrypted attachment, you know, uh, connection to Facebook. Use that if you can. It's in your settings. Same thing with Google, same thing with Gmail. Then you don't have to worry. Hotmail, now HTTPS. Outlook.com, now HTTPS. And a lot of it because of Fire Sheep. Because the guy showed how easy it is to steal this stuff. And you know, as long as we're talking about this, if you haven't been doing that all along, maybe uh, now would be a good time to change your email password. Just, you know, knock that guy off of there. He's been using your email for two years. Maybe time just to start over. Change your password every once in a while. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the uh, phone number, 888-827-5536. We're toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. You can also uh, visit us in, in the chat room. Always fun in there. Quite a few people. I'm almost a 1,000 people in there. You'll find the link to the chat room and the show notes and all that at techguylabs.com. Techguylabs.com. That's our new website. I hope you like it. By the way, it... it, it if you comment on there, I'd really, you know, add your, if you hear me say something and you say, I want to add something to that, use the website. Great place to add your comments. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> so Kim Commando wrote an article about security. I'd love to read that. Wonder what she said. <laughs> Wonder who wrote it for her. No, she might have written it. Let's see. I'm going to go to her site and find out. I'm, oh, it was in USA Today. Yes, yeah, she writes for USA Today. Let me let me see if I can. Uh, can I read that online? <laughs> Money, sports, life, tech. This looks like Pinterest. Everybody's got the Pinterest look now. Everybody's doing it. Oh, Samsung unveiled its mini Galaxy S3, the 4-inch. Oh, boy. So now you can get any size you want. Uh, I don't see your article. I'm really disappointed with how easily my um, my iPhone uh, 5 nicks. It's all nicked up. Oh, well. Giants, Tigers, World Series? I don't know. You think it'll be uh, Yankees or the Tigers? I know it's going to be the Giants.
Ring Central, all inclusive for twenty dollars per month per year. Try Ring Central. How to surf the web like a spy? That one? Oh yeah, I guess it is. Let's see what let's see what Kim says. Kim Commando special. Tracking company, search engines, and social networks. Government analyst. Scammers. Okay, how do I? I can't even. <laughs> this is an impossible to use website. Okay, hackers use viruses to. Exp that's not. To use exploit your computer. Keep a clean machine. When you surf, your browser keeps a record of where you go. Wipe out this information. <laughs> Disguise your IP address. What? What? She certainly did not write that. That was ghosted by somebody. And it was not very well done. That's why if you really want to learn about tech, you probably shouldn't be reading USA Today for your tech information. We did Theater Monkey. We, uh, I think, let me see. We, uh, let me see if the Teespring is done yet. Theater Monkey's asking if we made enough money on the um, T-shirt sales uh, to buy the elemental that we were hoping to get, and I think we did. Oh, it ended 18 hours ago. We sold 2,677 t-shirts. That's awesome. Thank you, everybody. Those t-shirts are being printed right now. So the final number is 2,677, huh? How much does that mean we made? 30 grand. Holy cow. Minus fees? 30. That's enough to buy two elementals. No, not quite. Wow, that's great. Thank you. Well done. Those private eyes, you're watching you. Chat room referred me to an article in uh, USA Today about protecting yourself online. Not the best advice I've ever read, but um, one of the things they mention in there, which uh, is bizarre, <laughs> they don't mention VPNs, which is the way to protect yourself online. I think they confuse it in USA Today with a proxy server, which is really a very limited use, uh, privacy or security wise. What a proxy server does is it gives you a different internet address when you're surfing, and it's used primarily. Uh, by people to um, trick, like let's say you're in the U.S. and you want to watch the BBC. BBC is blocked to anybody except U.K. users because they are the ones who pay for it. So you might use a proxy server to trick the BBC into thinking you're in the U.K. doesn't provide any security. None. Zero. Zip. Zilch. Um, so it's unfortunate because this is a big newspaper. A lot of people will read this article. And perhaps a, a handful of them will try to use a proxy server thinking it's giving them some value. And it's not. Um, so it's kind of uh, unfortunate. That's why you got to listen to this show, I guess. Um, it's too bad. Jerry in Lancaster, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Jerry. Hi, how are you doing, Leo? I'm well. How are you? Good. I'm in the market for a tablet. Um, I've just been starting to look around, and I'm just overwhelmed. Yeah, there's a lot of them now. Are you looking for an Android tablet or an iPad, or do you care? I don't care. I happened to be looking at some iPads last night, and uh, they were nice, but they were kind of pricey starting at 500 yeah, I mean, you can get, uh, it really does depend on what you want to do. You can get a, a one of my favorite tablets. It's a 7-inch tablet from Google itself. It's made by Asus. It's called the Google Nexus 7. You can buy it at play.google.com for 200 bucks, 250 if you want a larger memory footprint. I don't think you need it. Um, and it's a very nice tablet, 200 bucks. Um, 
However, if you want more capability, more speed, more storage, you, you can't easily spend a lot more. I think the iPad is the champagne of tablets. I don't know. Right. Uh, champagne priced, but also uh, a huge store of very useful applications. It's very elegant. It's well-designed. It's well-supported. Um, but and so for a long time, it was really the iPad was it. Uh, I, I wasn't recommending an Android tablet. I not, we are now seeing Android tablets that are very, very nicely done. Um, yeah, the iPad, the resolution was wonderful. The speed seemed to be good. Yeah, it's the fastest uh, tablet out there. Yeah, it's a, I thought it was a little pricey. Um, any any really high end tablet is going to be that expensive. Uh, Asus oh. makes uh, tr- something called the Transformer Prime, which I really like. It has a nice feature. You can buy an optional keyboard that it slots into, and it turns it into a laptop, which is kind of neat. But it's going to cost you, uh, you know, five hundred bucks. <laughs> it's it's right in there yeah. with the uh, iPad. And if you're going to spend that much, I would get an iPad to be honest. Okay. Yeah. I uh, now stay tuned because we are waiting for an announcement from Apple. We thought we'd have an invitation by this week. They did not send them out. John Pachowski writing in All Things D, he seems to have the best connection or one of the best connections to Apple. Said, "No, no, no, no. It's going to be October 24th or the 23rd." Um so that's when Apple is going to announce we we believe he believes and I think he's right. Everybody seems to agree. A new lower cost iPad. We've been. I doubt Apple will call it the iPad Mini, but I. But that's what we've all been calling it. Um, it will be probably the equivalent of an iPad Two in performance and screen, in a seven point eight five inch tablet. So smaller, which I you know I like. I like the smaller tablet. You can pocket it. You can take it with you. Uh, this Asus, uh, I'm sorry, Google Nexus 7 that I recommended, it's 7 inches, even smaller. Um, it, But what we don't know is how much lower cost. Apple's not notorious for cheap. <laughs> In fact, I don't think you could ever call anything Apple uh, did cheap or inexpensive. I would guess that it's going to be 300 350 bucks for this uh, iPad mini. But that's less than 500 Wi-Fi only, they, they seem to agree, Wi-Fi only. Um, because it is identical in screen resolution and power to an iPad 2, it will run most of the apps that are out there for the iPad. That's good. Um, but we don't know because Apple hasn't announced it yet. So watch. If you can hold off till October 23rd, 10 days, I would because I think that there will be another choice in the market. And some are saying this may be better than the, the big iPad. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, and by the way, October 26th, Microsoft starts shipping Surface tablets. These are the tablets based on the new Windows RT operating system. Uh, These are interesting. I wouldn't hold my breath for those because it's a brand new operating system. That means there will be very few applications available for it. It won't be particularly useful initially out of the box. Um, So I wouldn't be the first to get a Surface but I'll, I will. But I shouldn't say I wouldn't be, because I will. I'll run right out. But that's my job. I'm not sure I would say recommend that yet. Wait, wait six months, and we'll have a better idea of whether the surface is going to take off, or be, uh, you know, uh, at one with some of the tablets that have fa- fallen by the wayside. BlackBerry, remember, made the Playbook dead. The Motorola Zoom. <laughs> There's lots of. There were lots of bad tablets trying to copy the iPad, and. Um, I, you know, the Surface is really a big unknown right now. So if you're going to get a tablet, I would say the Nexus, if you want, if price is a real uh, issue, the 7-inch Nexus 7 is great. I love it. Great for surfing, email, um, applications, games, really nicely done. If you want the champagne, the caviar, the top of the line, the iPad is great, but it's but it is pricey. And, uh, it, and and I would also wait to see what Apple does with the iPad Mini. And if you're a Windows fan, if you love Windows, if you've looked at Windows 8 and say, boy, this is great, because that's what the RT tablet uh, basically is, Windows 8. Uh, if you like that, then maybe you'd kind of want to watch and, and, and wait and see. If, if, you, if you asked me today, I would probably get the Nexus 7, given the, the price. 
Amazon Kindle HD is interesting if you're an Amazon fanatic, like you use Amazon and that's it. I love Amazon. Uh, but it's not cheaper. It's only a little bit cheaper. And it's much less powerful. Much less powerful. I, I like the Nexus 7 from Google, actually. So that's that's kind of my recommendation. If money, if price is a big object, that's a good choice. Bob in Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Bob. Hello. Hey, um, I'm in outside sales, and uh, my Android is kind of at the end of its life. I need to get a new phone, and I've decided that I want to get a, a tablet also. Um and uh, it, it seems to me that a lot of the functions on a, on a tablet and a phone are redundant. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, basically, Android tablets are exactly the same as Android phones, just bigger. Right. And, and so, uh, it, you know, it kind of seems to me what, what, I, what I want a tablet for is so that I can, you know, be in, a, in the customer's office and be able to, you know. Hang on. We've got to take a break. But i gotta, I got a surprise for you. Stay tuned. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. love this. Have you seen this? The Galaxy Note? This is the new Note. The Note 2 just came out. It's a phablet. It's a, and it has a stylus. But he says he wants to make presentations. I'm not sure it's big enough, to be honest, for that. It's pretty, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. This is the phone I've been waiting for. I've re kind of retired the iPhone 5, at least till I get a case. You guys bored yet? You falling asleep? You could take a nap in that chair. There's a lever on the right. Just pull it and just lean back. <laughs> Where are you going next? Oh, you. Oh, the, is it tonight? The event? Oh, yeah. That's a bit of a tra a bit of a hike to Walnut Creek. If there's traffic, it can be a lot more. And there's almost always traffic in East Bay. Let me see what Waze says. Um, from here it might be, yeah. I usually go to Richmond. I, you know, it's funny. I'm not an expert on East Bay. You know who would know? Yes, yeah, he lives in Lafayette. He's lying. I'm writing about it. I don't know if he's still here. He, he knows the secret route. Secret route. Let me just see what there is. No, I'm done doing that. I am done putting anything in water. All right, navigate to... Walnut Creek. Because uh, thousands of other people are using this program. So it's only other people. Now, Apple has and Google have other ways of doing that. But, but this program monitors everybody using Waze. And it's in real time because as you're driving along, it's kind of seeing what your speed is. And, and you can also, and I love this program, you can, it's, it's, uh, you can report traffic accidents, speed traps, all that stuff. So as you're driving along, it'll say, police officer 1,300 feet ahead. So let's just see what Waze says. So Waze says, it also gives you one hour, two minutes, 50 miles via 37. Yeah, it says go through Vallejo. Oh, ETA just went up to 232. <laughs> so what it's doing is it's looking at it, it's looking at different traffic. So if you go the Highway 37, it's much faster. Two hours, 32 minutes, it was saying. Yeah, but that's if you don't go. So that was giving me two routes. So if you go the way I was thinking, Richmond Bridge, two and a half hours. If you go uh, Highway 37, which you were thinking, it's an hour. Oh, I'm sorry. it's that I, I'm mistaken. The ETA is 233. You were right. Yeah, yeah you were right. Yeah. And I find that pretty accurate. And it's rerouted me uh, several times. It's really uh, it's good for that. Right. So as I'm driving along, yeah, right. And it, it'll, it tells you how many people in the area are using this. And it's thousands. So um, there's 54 traffic reports right now 
in the system heavy traffic on washington street standstill jefferson street but they get avenue car stopped on shoulder police visible near katahdi i mean these are all reports coming in from wazers in the area police visible in nevada moderate traffic at nevada car stopped on shoulder near nevada so this is all within maybe 30 miles of here it's pretty cool i love waze Oh, that's called Glimpse with a Y. That's an awesome program. Yeah, yeah. love that. Our musical director, Kyle, Kyle Benham, spinning the platters today. And he uh, makes a playlist available after the fact on his Google Plus account, K-Y-L-E space B-E-N-H-A-M. But we also put it at the end of the show notes on uh, every show on our website, techguylabs.com. Kyle, you got to work in some Madonna music over the next day or so because I'm going to see... Madonna in Denver Thursday night. So I'm I want to get in the mood. So just a, a musical note, musical director. <laughs> ah, James in New Jersey, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, how you doing today? I'm well, James. How are you? Okay, I have a uh, Dell uh, Inspiron. I'm coming up with an L59 uh, 5B. I bought I bought it without a hard drive. I got it from like a military sale, and I put it in a hard drive, and it's telling me that I have a password authentication problem. Uh, it has a serial number then fifty nine five feet. Uh, There's a risk buying a computer from a military sale. <laughs> I don't. They may have locked this sucker down. Um, so the password. There's several places you can put a password in a computer. And uh, since the hard the hard drive isn't in it or wasn't in it, it's not the hard drive. You know, you can put a password on Windows and so forth. They've got a password uh, in the BIOS. There, you can either lock the BIOS so that nobody could change the settings, or you could set a BIOS level password so that for, at hardware level somebody can't turn the computer on. Given that it's a military computer, that does not surprise me. That does not surprise me. So um, I guess one possibility is to to use the uh, uh, pull out the battery out of uh, the the that backs up your BIOS. Look for a lithium battery, the size of a quarter, silver battery. Pop it out, and then you're going to have to do some research on the web on that particular motherboard. Find out what that motherboard is in that computer, and you'll probably have to j- set some jumpers to clear the BIOS settings. I do not know if that'll fix it. Uh, if it's a, if, you know, if, uh, if it's real security and given the military uh, owned that computer, I would guess it is, it may not be anything you can do anything about. You, you may be out of luck. I forgot. I was going to talk about, uh, an alternative to our caller who, uh, is in, in outside sales and he, uh, he, he's trying to decide he wants, he thinks he wants a phone and a tablet because he wants to have something that he can do presentations for in sales. Now, the the answer that may surprise you is this new phone from Samsung that I was talking about at the beginning of the show. It just came out. It'll be available, I believe, on Verizon and AT&T and maybe Sprint, too. It's called the Galaxy Note 2. And it is the largest screen uh, smartphone out there right now, five and a half inches. It's big. But it's not, I don't think it's big enough to do presentations. When you say presentations, you know, that, that seems to me like you need something a little bit bigger. You certainly could hook this up to a, a projector and do a presentation on the, on the screen. There, there was ways to do that with the USB cable. This is, I think it supports MHL, which means you could do micro HDMI out of it. Hook that up to a projector. That may be more complicated than you want. There are specialized phones that have Pico projectors built in. They're not very nice. They're kind of uncomfortable because they have a big bulge where the projector. I've seen these every year at the Consumer Electronics Show. And you just, you know, you have a PowerPoint presentation on the phone and you project it against the wall. Both of those are kind of ungainly. In my opinion, your your best bet is to get a tablet and get a phone. That, I think, was your initial instinct. Um, a, a nicer tablet, like an iPad, get the $500 base iPad it's going to give you such so much nicer presentations. They're going to look so much better. And this is your bread and butter. And then you can carry a regular phone around. Combining the two is a little tricky. Not my, not probably ideal. But it, but it, but an iPad looks good. It's slick. 
You can get a nice little case for it, and it would be a very, I think, a very nice presentation tool. Uh, 8888 uh, Ask Leo. That's the uh, phone number if you've got a question, a comment, a suggestion. Neil is in Arizona, our next caller. Hi, Neil. Hi. This is the Leo Laporte Show. This is the Leo Laporte Show. Is this Neil? I'm sorry. No, this is Brandy. Oh, hi, Brandy. I picked up the wrong line. Go ahead. You get to ask your question, and I'll get to, I'll get to Neil after that. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, my husband got the uh, SOPA virus on our laptop. Do you know, is there a way to remove that? <laughs> What's the name of the virus? The SOPA virus? Yeah, S-O-P-A. It says that your computer has been locked, and you have to pay a $200 fine because... Uh, within 72 hours, otherwise you'll get arrested. Wow, they're getting so clever. First of all, that's a lie, obviously. And I think I figured I think you figured that out. This is ransomware. But for them to take the in <laughs> as the name of the virus, the so, the uh, SOPA, which was the Stop Online Piracy Act that got f- fortunately got uh, torpedoed in Congress, it just cracks me up. Just these these virus authors, they're so funny. So SOPA was, in fact, a bill in front of Congress that was so heinous, would have broken the Internet, that everybody on the Internet uh, stood up against it. And frankly, uh, fortunately, we got, got rid of it. So the SOPA virus is one of a category of viruses called ransomware. Uh, so once you get the virus on there, uh, I don't know if it actually does erase your data, but it, you can't use it uh, until you pay people. Now, uh, I'm looking at a, uh, a description of this virus on a site called UYOOsecurity.com that says how to unlock it. And, uh, and I, will, I will put this in the show notes, YOOsecurity.com. You can run it, and it probably will fix the problem. However, <laughs> if you got that, you may have other things on there. And it worries me when I see a computer infected that even if you were able to get this infection out of the way, what kind of stuff is there that's not making any noise? Remember, the bad guys can make money in a couple of ways. This is the most blatant way, which is blackmail, basically. Give us 200 bucks, or we'll erase your hard drive. But there's other ways they can do it. For instance, they they can take over hundreds or thousands of computers and sell them to spammers. Say, hey, you want to send out spam? You can use these computers. We own them. In that case, they don't want you to know they're on your system. They want to be as quiet as possible. They don't make an announcement. They sit there in the background. Similarly, they can be sold to uh, as botnets to to people who want to blackmail other sites. Common... uh, We'll see this coming in January when the Super Bowl happens. Probably we'll see it for the World Series, too. Gambling sites uh, get threats. It's, they're extortion attempts. They're, you know, it's uh, the old protection scheme. It would be a shame, a terrible shame, if your website were to be off the air during the World Series. You wouldn't be able to take any bets. For $100,000, we can be sure this doesn't happen. Of course, the bad guy's real threat is, and if you don't give me the money, I'm going to send all these botnet zombie computers against you. Yours might be one of them. The problem is you can't tell. You could run this use security software, get rid of the SOPA virus, and still be infected. So I'm, I'm going to send you there, send your husband there. He doesn't have to pay 200 bucks. Whatever you do, don't give him 200 bucks. It will not erase your hard drive. Run the use security thing. You get rid of that. But then you probably should bring it to a, a good technician and say, wipe the drive and start over or do it yourself. There are other programs you can run. There's antivirus software. There's malwarebytes.org, M-A-L-W-A-R-E-B-Y-T-E-S.org. You can run Microsoft's own malicious software removal tool. You can run a lot of programs that, you know, will check. But there's there's never that certainty that you've got rid of it all. You can't be. Uh, Because it hides. So I always like to wipe it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. This is Madonna, right? <laughs> hey, uh, not 32. It's your live radio. So that's a Madonna song, right? Okay, just check. A cover. I don't know this stuff. 
Play Yellow Pony. <laughs> yes, you probably figured this out. It's not my idea to go see Madonna. My girlfriend wants me to go. Anything you want, dear. Neil in Arizona, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. How are you doing, Leo? How are you? I am well. How are you? Great. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling. I'm sorry. I, I, I thought I was picking you up last call, but now I got you. That's okay. Great. Listen, I had an issue. I, I just bought a an Xbox the other, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I connected it up, set it up, and linked it to my computer. I have a Windows 7 machine, and I want to be able to stream content from it. However, it won't play all of the tracks. It will pay, it'll play the script tracks from my DV, uh, CD. Yes, because there's no copy protection on those tracks. Right, but it won't play my iTunes track. No, because iTunes. there's copy protection on those tracks. <laughs> now, those are probably older tracks because copy protection is gone now in iTunes. That's the good news. Uh, but if you bought them more than a couple of years ago, are they older? Some of them are older, yeah. Yeah, those will not play because the uh, the Xbox Media Extender says, nah, you can't. Now, here's the good news. In fact, everybody should do this. For 25 bucks, you can replace all of those copy-protected tracks with higher-quality, uh, unprotected tracks using iTunes uh, Match. Do I have to buy iTunes and start installing? Well, there's two, actually, I should say there's two ways to do this. If you go to your iTunes and look for iTunes Plus, they have a new feature where you can for, it's it's probably going to be more expensive, but you, it depends on how many copy protected tracks you still have. But you can upgrade, I think it was 29 cents, upgrade each track to unprotected. But I think iTunes Match is a better deal. Uh, iTunes Match, you pay 25 bucks once, and it gives you two things. One, it will replace, all, you can replace all your music with 256-bit, very high-quality AAC, unprotected. So older tracks will be upgraded, and the protection will be removed. Uh, it will also replace, if you have lower-quality rips of your own, it will re replace those if it recognizes them. And it gives you streaming capabilities, so if you have an iOS device, you can stream any of those cuts on the iOS device. I think iTunes Match, even if you only do it once for 25 bucks, is really great. If you have you. if you have more than a hundred songs with copy protection, do that. Okay, thank you. Can I throw one quick question for you? Sure. I'm looking to replace my phone pretty soon, but I, I'm thinking I have Android right now. I'm thinking of going either with another, I could have a Samsung Galaxy F3, for example, or perhaps a Windows. I know Paul Perot talked about a Windows phone. What do you think about it? What would you know, you know, we're going to see these Windows 8 phones in a month, and uh, I have to defer till then. These are good. From the hardware point of view, every bit as good as a Galaxy S3. The uh, HTC 8X is a beautiful phone, probably a better camera, maybe the best camera of any phone. But Windows Phone 8's new. Uh, the software, uh, you know, is more limited. Um, I, I like it. It's a good interface. It's just not what everybody's using. And sometimes uh, it's good to be, you know, dance to the beat of a different drummer. Sometimes not. And as long as you understand what you're doing, uh, moving to Windows Phone might be a good move. Uh, but if you've got an iPhone, you've got an investment in iOS. Oh, you don't, though. You're moving from Android. So you don't care. You don't have an investment in either one at this point. I like the Galaxy S3, by the way. I think it's probably, um, well, I've replaced it now with a Galaxy Note 2. But uh, which is very similar, just a bigger screen. I think these are uh, arguably the best phones out there. But the competition is tough. The iPhone 5 is great. And uh, the Windows Phone 8 phones look really good. And the, of the best of the breed is probably the HTC 8X. At this point, they're all good enough that it's a personal choice. It's There's no right answer. You have to go. I would go to a AT&T or Verizon store and look at all three of them. You can't look at the Windows phones yet. They'll be out in a month. And it's not its not clear whether Verizon's going to have them. AT&T will have all three. So go to the AT&T store and look at a GS3, a Note 2. They'll have that as well. If you like a big screen, I, I love a big screen. The HTC 8X and the iPhone 5. Boy, it's, a, it's, a, it's nice. you got a great choice. They're diff, very different devices. The iPhone 5 is like a finely made Swiss watch. It's just beautiful. Really elegant. It's also fairly fragile. I've already nicked mine up, so at this point it looks like a really beat-up, finely made Swiss watch. Um, the GS3 is a little more robust, so is the, uh, the Note. Dick DiBartolo, for 40 years, 
Eh, make it 50 years. Has been writing. Yeah, 50. Yeah. Yeah. Been, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Has been writing for Mad Mag. He was a kid. He was a kid when he started writing for Mad Magazine. He's still doing it. And this whole time, what does he do with all that money he makes from Mad Magazine? He sinks it into gadgets. Dickie I D. do. Dickie D, welcome. Hey, it's good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, I have a, a new gadget here. I don't know if you got even a chance to buy the original because when it came out, it sold out quickly. It was the Nest Learning oh, Thermostat. I just ordered the new one. You have it? Oh. Uh, this is the new guy. Oh, I'm so jealous. So the Nest 2.0 is now thinner. You know, the original was designed by the people who designed the iPod. Yeah, so that's Tony why Fidel, it, yeah. it, it's so nice and now, shiny. This new one replaces most thermostats in your house. Now, and that's yes. why I ordered it, because I'm going to unscrew the old thermostat and put this one on there. Yes, 95% of systems now, there's new software. If you have the original Nest, don't worry. You will automatically get upgraded to the new software, and that has started. So why should I replace my thermostat with this? Well, what's neat about this, a couple things. First of all, is the you don't program it. The first week you say, oh, I, I'm warm, I'm cold, I'm warm. You, you just set the thermostat like it's a manual thermostat. It remembers all those settings. It keeps refining those settings. It has motion sensors. If no one, and a very wide angle, uh, 150 degree wide angle sensor. And it says, you know what? I don't see anybody roaming past here. I'm going to either lower the air conditioning or in the winter, I'm going to lower the heat. And it does that. It, it looks for half an hour. If it sees no motion, it'll go to its default mode and, and lower everything. So it can save you money. It's it's so great looking. Now you can add in if you have whole house humidifiers and dehumidifiers. You can add that into the settings. Um, Do you the, the save thing, money, you think, because of this? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it... it you can fine tune it so that it'll go on to the exact minute you want it in the morning. But the interesting thing is they found 90% of the people who use them want to control them remotely. So now they've added control from the Nexus 7, from the Kindle Fire, from any smartphone. So wherever you go, you can also check in, see what your Nest uh, 2.0 is doing. Uh, and you pre-ordered it. It's uh, the same price, two forty nine. It's a little and pricey. It's, it's a little pricey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want the original, they're closing them out through Lowe's for two twenty nine. But for twenty dollars, I think I would want you know the latest. I, I ordered and, it on Amazon, and um, you know they're they're a little back ordered. Or no, I guess they weren't even out yet. No, they're, they're not shipping. I believe the ship date is October twenty first. Yeah, that's what they said. I'll be getting it uh, October. I'm so excited. So you like this? No, I wait like a minute. It said October 14th. October 14th. That's tomorrow. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it tomorrow. <laughs> no, the 21st. No, tomorrow. it says, I'm looking at it. Uh, maybe I got the wrong one. It says oh, October. You know, may, oh, you know, maybe yours did. Okay, originally it was October 21st. It, it seems to be uh, released on the 14th. Okay. I'm excited. Dick D. Bartolo, gizwiz.biz is his website. Go there to play the What the Heck Is It contest for a chance to win an autographed copy of magazine from uh, Matt. Gizwiz.biz. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We ran out of time, but we got it in. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, the Tech Guy is just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows now on the Twit Netcast Network, and you'll find them all at twit.tv. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPad on iPad Today. You get your daily dose of tech news from Tech News Today and our weekly roundtable show This Week in Tech. It's all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next time with another great Tech Guy podcast. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.